welcome back to another episode of the Knife Nuts Podcast. And holy crap, it's been forever. It hasn't been, though, right? It's, it's only been it, three weeks. I feel like it's been forever. It does feel like it. It's only because we have so much to talk about. And we have a plan. We've got this yeah. shit locked down. we got new recording software. This is professional. We're using that Patreon money. I would also like to say that I've dedicated a room in the house to podcast recording. <laughs> that's how ser- mm-hmm. that's how seriously we're taking this right you now. need to dedicate mm-hmm. that to a second room for jake to live in so that <laughs> we can get slightly God, better podcasting seriously. conditions seriously seriously in similar fashion i have also been doing some construction but it's not working i, I tried to soundproof my <laughs> my workshop where i sit for the podcast and apparently the girls are just you need too- a completely soundproof chamber we yeah like build- na- where not even air can get in and that's how I die. We need to put you at the bottom of the ocean or some shit. You need to be like Jacques Cousteau down there in yeah, Mariana's Trench, live from yeah. Mariana's Trench. He's just built an amplifier to sit in. For the, <laughs> that's basically what's happening. Yeah, I swear to God, the, the, all the sounds from above you are just somehow funneling down directly into your microphone. <laughs> it's so true. Dude, this episode has six hosts, two of them being Stella and your other child whose name eludes me right now. <laughs> now I'm going to edit that part out and make it sound like I'm a good friend. <laughs> Brian, are you alive? Yeah, man. Hey, Brian's here. Yeah, first episode of three weeks, Brian. You so, sound thrilled. So it's true. We actually have a little bit of structure. We have some stuff we want to go over. Uh, so we're going to be going over uh, so Spider Co's new reveal strategy, which is something we all need to talk about. Yes. Obviously, we have a lot of new new acquisitions that have uh, have come in over the past forever that that we've been away from you guys. Mm-hmm. And we have uh, basically our thoughts on our trip to the New York uh, Custom Knife Show. Yep. We uh, we got a lot to cover. Mm. Plus, I mean, just a lot of shit just happened in the last couple of weeks. So. Yeah, including the Knife News uh, Choice Awards, which some of them were choice. Some of them were not quite choice. I'm, we'll get into that later. Yes. But I think we definitely all have feelings about that. Indeed. So should we kick things off by talking about what Spider-Co is doing? I feel like... It's something that's going to affect everything eventually, so we might as well get it get it out there. Yeah, I, I don't know if the story is, is really that huge, but it is important because Spider Co is probably one of the biggest players in in the enthusiast community. But basically, they released their 2019 product guide, which has no new knives in it, and their explanation was they're not going to be showing their new knives until they're ready to be released. And it's probably because people have been killing them for years about how long it's taken to release some of their products. So. See, I think it's for a different reason. Okay. I think it's because they're going to raise the prices significantly. Oh, no, yeah, they're going to – nobody – I don't I don't know what it is about Spider-Co, but they need to be somewhat less transparent about how they're constantly raising prices. Costs. Dude, the tooling costs are coming back with a vengeance. This Now they're tariff costs. You so. know how we You know how we laughed at the price of the Paisan in the German catalog? Oh, was yeah. what? It was like nine hundred bucks or something. Yeah, I feel like there's no laughing. I feel like it's that's that's coming. Yeah, I mean it's I don't know. so everyone you know needs to raise prices occasionally to stay competitive and deal with inflation. But there's something about the way Spiderco approaches it that makes it feel like they're doing it more often and raising them higher than anyone else. I don't know what it is. It's just a perception issue, um, and it just it always seems to me like they're the ones that are making the most complaints about how expensive it is to make knives. Um, the cost of labor, I don't know, material costs increasing, maybe tooling costs. I'll jump in and be the Spiderco apologist because the the thing that stood out to me that I remember is they actually pay their employees and seem to take care of them pretty well. And uh, I don't know, maybe it just it makes it easier to swallow <laughs> thinking that the the extra money we're paying is actually going to uh, – Oh, that wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me at all if they if they're a great company to work for. I totally I don't, yeah. They made a they made one of those best best places to work lists, like a Forbes type deal. I, I would um, not doubt that. They're, they're really nice people. It's just it's I don't want to say pricing out of the market because everyone loves to say shocking hot takes like that, but it's really kind of getting pretty crazy at this point. I, I think know. it's I think you're both right. I think it's going they're going to be able to raise the prices because they know we'll pay for it. Yeah, there's definitely a dedicated... I mean, they're not a brand that non-enthusiasts buy. 
Like right. they're not in, I, as far as I know, they're not in big box stores at all. They're like 100% an enthusiast brand. So we're people, we're done with our money. We'll buy expensive knives. Hell, I we'll talk about it later, but I got in one of the new spider goes that people said was overpriced. So I do wonder I though, how much of it is due to the fact that they're getting pretty far behind in their 2018 release structure. I feel like every company, especially the American ones, have felt that pressure. I think it's all because of we nice. they fight off a little more they can than they can chew based on the rate that the competition is able to put out product. Yeah, I mean, Spiderco has probably half the employees that we does um, altogether. I don't know how if that really counts their OEMs or not, but I mean, they've got what three or four undelivered products for 2019 the paisan the big expensive one the drunken one uh mm-hmm. the drunken another big expensive one the one that slices your the one and the one that yeah. what's the one that slices the trope, your the trope end, which they maybe they're redesigning and then they have the sabotage <laughs> coming too none of oh, those are yeah. yet. and yeah, shit it's no. december 4th nothing's coming out in 2018 let's just put it that way yeah those are all being pushed back i know they're redesigning the smock a little bit and people are really excited about that one uh, what kills me about that one is the giant choil to overcome the size of the button for the compression lock release. It doesn't seem like a worthy trade-off to me. No. I mean, I mean, I usually don't get too excited about any new spider cone until I really get my hands on it and see it. Because it's just too much to to take in and it's a lot. It's getting very expensive. That's yeah. really where it comes down to. Yeah, it's... It's certainly gone up, but speaking of expensive, ZT just released two new knives. Mm-hmm. Both are expensive. Both so. aren't new. Well, only one is a new knife. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I guess three knives then. But I was three talking knives. About, I was talking about yeah. the five six the five sixty two tie, which is mm. why is that two hundred and eighty dollars? Because I don't they're basing it on the pricing that that, that knife cost in twenty thirteen. Yeah. And they're giving us the knife we wanted in twenty thirteen. But nobody wants it anymore. Like, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I'm not speaking for everyone. Mr. Scurvy wants it. <laughs> yes, Jonathan, wants def- Jonathan definitely wants it. He, he definitely can, wants it. He that can now. get one if he wants. $280 seems kind of crazy for That's him. That's steep before. by today's standards. Absolutely. It is. I, uh, I'm not sure why that titanium scale with the milling really costs that much more than some of their other knives they released this year. That's not a sprint run. That's is that a, no, that's, that's a, apparently going to be a full production model. A standard I, I production. Would, yeah, I would mistook it for a sprint run. Okay, so the moral of the story is you buy this in a year and a half from now when it's one hundred and fifty bucks. Correct. Yeah. Because I just bought what was it the uh, the zero nine twenty the um, less George Harpy less George Harpy design. I got it for one eighty nine or something. I discontinued. I think, but what were they? They were almost three hundred bucks. They were over three hundred no, bucks. No, no, it was two forty or something. It was two forty, oh, well. I think. Okay, okay. Well, there you go. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, and it's yeah. There's going to be a big discount, or you can get it on the secondary used. Like I, I feel like a dummy for buying three ZTs new this year, but truthfully, like people buy them and then immediately get rid of them. So yeah, they lose their value quick. If you're at all in any of the knife social media outlets, you'll find the. The ZT you want at, at a discount. They so. are basically the German cars of the knife world. They're really well built, but the second you drive it off the lot or take ownership of it, it loses like half its value. It's kind of true. Yeah. They I, just, I don't mind that analogy. I know. It, it's such a tired analogy to compare things to cars, but it works. It works. <laughs> and then the, uh, the 0055 BRZ, so giving the, the Swan Song, which was a terrible carcass album, uh, it's not a good carcass album. It's really bad. <laughs> There's that, there, it's, it's not that bad. There's one or two good out songs on there. I listened to it right after hearing uh, Heartwork for the Heartwork? first time, and I was oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. no, this band's not oh, that great. Yeah, Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. You got, But sometimes it's okay to keep on rotting in the free world. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. But That's anyway, bad. they gave the swan song to the 0055, which is discontinued after only one year. Shut, uh, That's surprise, pr- surprise. I think not many people that thing had a lot of fervor around it when it was new. Dude, that's where the that's where the Patreon money is going to to buying words like fervor. I'm gonna drop a bomb a, on that one. It's a word. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. But yeah. but you know what I mean? It's, no, no, absolutely. People were like, holy shit, it's a production GTC and then, made by and then Plus. The, yeah. Everyone yeah. shot them out of their ass to get rid of them. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, it's not a practical design. It's something you'd probably keep in your collection just to be like, ha, look at this cool thing. Uh, but it, I tend not to keep it. It wears those. thin pretty quick. It absolutely. Wears thin. So they're, they're releasing with the bronze handle, a black wash blade for more than, uh, slightly more than it was originally. But mm. 
I don't know. I, I, I had no interest in that knife originally, so I have no interest in this is Sprint either. No, but, thank you. Yeah, I would say get the discontinued original version. For one sixty nine. Yeah. For one sixty nine, that's a great knife. That's a that's a real curio. Mm-hmm. That's a curio piece. I mean, all right, I'm going to turn on all the big all words. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. The only the only problem with that zero zero five five, Dave, is that it doesn't cut anything. No, absolutely not. And <laughs> is uh, it thick behind the edge? I it's thick behind imagine. both edges. It's, it's our, that's like our new our new official uh, pet peeve of, of that the should whole be everybody's podcast. fucking pet peeve, man. That's not that's yeah, not. But a, we've all no, we've all come together. I mean, except for Brian, obviously, but we've all come together and in, in hating that at the same time. Yeah, Brian grinds. We really do things at the same time. Or Mills, no, Brian, Jake, Mills you're just late. Jake's just late to the party. We've all it's been. I, we've, I, all, I, we've all I, hated. I, it. Yeah, we we've been there, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know what? I forgot about. Remember when Quartermaster kind of stole the design of that, of the GTC Airborne? Whatever happened to Quartermaster? You don't hear anything from them mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. Or I might have blocked them on Instagram. So that's maybe why I don't hear anything. I mean, we're blocked. More likely, I mean, I they know. blocked you on Instagram. Oh, shit. Yeah. You know what? Let me. They went around just blocking that. like knife collectors who were in the know. <laughs> let me I mean, I got blocked when I, I was like, you know, just an innocent bystander. Do, do you remember the, the the cover art for this podcast was originally uh, Jared West? But yeah, I'm I can't see Quartermaster knives, so that's that's good to know. They've kind of disappeared. If anyone knows what happened to them, is Jared West like face down in a pile of cocaine? Let us know. Allegedly. Mm. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yes. Generally. <laughs> yeah. Generally, he might be, you know, in in a pile of cocaine. That's not a far fetched conclusion. No. Uh, let's bring back the slander. We haven't done that in a while. Make wild Brian, accusations. Brian, about what are your thoughts on uh, on on zero tolerance knives? I have no thoughts on them. That's good. That's what I thought. Let's move on. <laughs> what are your thoughts on re-releasing knives? Are you going to bring back an old one at some point with a slightly different finish? Probably not. I don't know. Not yet. It's not um, your style. I, I mean, truth, it's... Uh, I'm at a kind of a point where i don't know what the hell to do so it really wouldn't be a bad idea at least i can get something moving but i i just don't want to do it yet i think it's too soon yeah that's fair i mean you you know i mean i don't know why you need to re-release anything everything's been a typhoon anyway <laughs> burn <laughs> sick burn dude <laughs> okay well, I don't know. I have the daggers. That's not a typhoon. Oh, wait. You don't yeah. have one of them. Uh, I have the chicanes. That's oh, not a typhoon. Shit. Oh, wait. You'll never have one of them either. So, oh. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that was the one I like. Drop all the bombs on that one. God damn. Right. That's it. That's enough. Okay. Oh, it hurts because it's true. It hurts because it's true. But I'll show you guys. You don't the, know what's happening. So the good thing I know what's happening is that all of us. Are you having? Are you having we manufacture one just for you? <laughs> nope. Shut your mouth, Jake. <laughs> Yo, wait until Levon sells the design to We Eyes, and we start uh-huh. seeing fake ones out there. Holy My sh- master plan. Yo, it be your own people's homie. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is gonna happen. Levin, you're going to sell that design to the Chinese. We're going to start seeing it right, right along with the uh, Chinese. The a little it? nuts on nuts The chai food. It could happen. <laughs> Don't ever say nuts on nuts crime. Nuts on nuts crime. That's what it was. That's basically what happened to Jake when Aaron jumped on him. That's true. While singing oh, yeah, Baby Shark. Photographic evidence of that. Yeah. That, that was some serious nuts on nuts I crime, Seriously, but. that's all I hear is the Baby Shark song. It, I don't know what happened, but I just like, it, it never stuck in my memory. And I think I'm pretty lucky for that. It just it just kept going that whole time we were there. But we'll talk more about yeah. the New York Custom Knife Show momentarily. Um, we got a lot of new knives in the past month. Let's let's talk about the one we all got because this doesn't happen super often. That's true. Yeah, we'll, we all got uh, one of Elijah Isham's uh, Black Star. Is it a slip joint? Should we call it a slip joint? Yeah, it's, it's not it's a slip a, joint. I mean, it doesn't have a joint. It won it's, Reader's Slip Joint of the Year, or <laughs> but it's not a slip joint. It's like a it's like a a, a non locking flipper. Yeah, it's a detent ball non locking knife. I don't know what to call it. Right, it's a slip joint. It's a slip joint. Just call it a slip joint. Fuck it. We'll call it a slip joint. It's fine. But, you know, it's not. Either way, it's good. I like it a lot. Um, I love the design. It's very thin behind the edge. 
It is. It's M390, which feels like overkill, but I I don't mind. <laughs> I, I thought so, but I've, I've actually, I've used mine so much, uh, I did manage to uh, chip the edge. Yeah. Avon might remember. Yeah, you, you literally took so. like a, it looks like something took a bite out of your out of your knife. <laughs> Jesus, I've what are you doing? It. I've been using it daily. I mean, I've been I've been using mine as much as I can. I mean, it's the knife I always have on me because it fits in the watch pocket. He did a really good job with those. What's also, funny is... Let's say that he gave them to us as a gift, which is also super nice of him. So, yes. It was, thank it was you, nice Elijah. Thing. I'll put some we, clapping. We gave him a horrible, horrible gift. Yeah, that oh, wasn't yeah. really a fair trade on our part. No, but three he's got a real stars. gift. He's got a real gift coming. <laughs> yeah, three black stars for a uh, for a <laughs> brass for blades. a brass blades raven. Damn. Which he ended up taking a grinder to both sides, and now it's like an ashtray. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, what it what it deserves. It's, it's now uh, Nick Chirpin's, uh, uh box cutter. Oh, okay. But, but I saw cigarettes put out on it too. It's so. <laughs> it's, it's it's living oh, a good man. second life. It's good. Yeah, but uh, That's deep. that cuts deep. T- it's yeah. a really cool little knife. It's just such a cool design. I don't care how small it is. It's it's really just a cool novelty piece too. I can't mm. believe how many of my pants have watch pockets. Well, all of my jeans have them, so it's really I'm, quite all nice. of my pants have them, whether oh. they're jeans or not. That's why I was really excited. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, and it's got a nice pocket clip, too. So It does have a but nice pocket. Do you really need a watch pocket when you started wearing a flashlight pouch on your belt? Oh, no. Well, that's where you've got <laughs> no. that wrong. That's no, where you got no, that no, wrong. No, 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 <laughs> no. Nah. Jake, Jake is really excited so because I no, put that it I on. I cannot abide. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm definitely not wearing it. Okay. But no, I wore no. it in. Yeah, in he wasn't dead serious. Jake. but I wore it to mock Jake. Oh, because okay. I know he would use it if he bought this bought this flashlight. No, I did. I mean, I used to carry uh, I used to carry a Leatherman on a on a leather pouch on my belt for five or ten years. So that, I'll as take long it. as you don't have the BlackBerry on the on the clip on your belt, <laughs> we're fine. He would if he could. I mean, Jake, you're you're no stranger to fashion faux pas. You did wear an Olight do rag at one point, so I want to mm. see the combination of the Olight do rag. The Mashuga Affliction shirt and the Crocs <laughs> and the camo shorts. <laughs> you got to bust that, that out at Blade, man. That's that's the ultimate. You know, kill him like with if that you fit. if you were a superhero and you raised your mighty sword into the air and said, "I have the power," you would end up dressed exactly like that. The, is that is that better than than just the Crocs and uh, fishing belt? <laughs> that's that's your final form. If you if you come up against an adversary that just has bests you, you have to take on your final form, which is fishing belt with nude. Yeah, you versus Wilkie. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Damn, the drip on that outfit is crazy. But yep, <laughs> I don't even remember what we were talking about. I don't either. Before we got no the black star. Oh yeah, so you you took a chunk out of yours on the blade. I took a chunk out of mine on the handle. Um, it's winter coat season, so this always makes me nervous because my coats always catch my pocket clips. So the coat I was wearing decided it wanted to be Blake Griffin, and it just slam dunked my black star into the pavement, like viciously. Fall. Is it now a falling star? It's, uh, well, <laughs> good job. Oh, Sorry, man, that was some uh, was just as bad as always. Some yes, yes, some one thousand grit sandpaper actually cleaned up the the chunk of G ten oh, yeah, missing pretty well. So yeah, it's not too bad. Um, that was a good idea. Yeah, and you know who that gave me that sandpaper it was Jake. Elijah. Oh, Jake! Yes, he sends you sandpaper. Thank you, Jake. You rescue my black star, but only Jake sends you care packages of sandpaper. Dude, it. it's it's helpful. I mean, I was glad. Yeah, so it, it doesn't look too bad, but it's definitely got some battle scars now, and it's just a nice knife. I have it on me every day, so you know, it comes in the two colors. It comes in the green and the black, and my instincts would have told me that I would want the green for the contrast. But it looks so nice in the black. Yeah, it looks really cool. Especially black is definitely my choice. This the way the carbon fiber inlays transitions into it, it's just it's very nice. It's really cool. Um, I think there's some available again, maybe. Yeah, yeah. They, this I don't know how many runs they're doing, but they definitely uh, this probably is the last batch of it. If I, if I well, were my guess. my pen pal Richards saw mine and and uh, got excited for the first time about a knife in I don't know six months probably. Uh, and I was able to find him one uh, through PVK, like just two days ago. So. Use coupon code KnifeNuts for 5% off your order. 
<laughs> this is too early I for mean, the app. Certainly did. Good. That'd be really bad if he didn't. Yeah. It's it's a sweet it's a sweet non locking knife. Um, and thank you, Elijah. That was very generous of you, man. So, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. Speaking of free knives, I do want to talk about two knives that we got from our other sponsor, uh, Kaiser Kaiser Cutlery. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we we um, received the the brand new version of the Feist, which is a Justin Lundquist uh, design. Really, really nice. I really like the changes they made to this knife because it. I mean, I've handled the original one. I don't think it feels anything like the original. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's improved in every conceivable in way. In every conceivable way, it is improved. Um, it's also very thin behind the edge. I would I would certainly hope so for a knife of that size. And the D10 is dialed. It doesn't have the ugly, swirly-twirly pivot. It's got some holes, which is nice. People like holes in the frame. It's very fashion-forward. I know if you like your Laconicos and your Mayos. Yeah, I'm partial to the the holes in the frame. It's it's definitely nice. Yeah, and did they fix the stop pin? The weird thing that they did with the stop pin? I I, from what I understand, the entire thing is re-engineered. It's not even the same. It's basically not the same knife. Cool. Yeah, I I I hope people pick that one up because the first one the first one was popular despite its issues. So. Yeah, I think if you picked one up, you'd be very happy with it, especially if you're trying to dip your toes into the front flipper water. Like you've had a lot of uh, spider coes, you've had a lot of thumb stud knives, you've had a lot of flippers. You're naturally going to want something a little different, and I think this is a really good way to do it. Yeah, and if you can't afford a Gareth Bull Shamwari because they sell in, I don't know, two milliseconds when, after he puts mm-hmm. them up. So, yeah, it's a good right. alternative to that. But um, the other knife that they provided us with is another Elijah Isham design, which is the Theta. Um, it was the second in a series of knives. One was actually made by another manufacturer. The uh, but the Theta is a you know a very practical knife for Elijah's sake because he usually tends to take the design language very far, and I think this one there was a lot more restraint. Uh, the detent's a little softer than I would like, um, and there are some characteristics of it that come through um, Elijah's designs and in other models that I've had. But it's very nice. It's a very nice knife. I think if you like his designs, um, this will be a great one to carry and use. Yeah, I will say it's the one that upset people on Blade Forums the least by its design. So that's mm-hmm. probably high praise. Mm, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you stuff. What doesn't upset people? Oh man, forums? yeah, no. It's, it's a real it's a real problem but yes casuals thank you kaiser as usual and yes, uh they have their black month sales that's still going on there it is black month it so is still can, black month yes congrats everyone let's celebrate black month with some deals on some kaiser knives yes there's a bunch of really good deals on kaisers um and tangrams you oh tangram. shit yes tangram which i am collecting i'm hoarding these things i feel like smaug but instead of sitting on a pile of gold i'm sitting on a <laughs> pile, of bunch of knives. On pile of knives i can literally see four right now sitting on a table in my apartment i need to do something with these so yeah, we'll think of funny. a giveaway i'm gonna try and give them to my friends I'll give some to people on Instagram or something because I need to get rid of these. They're all we incredible. Hand, we though. handed them out to people at, at the New York Custom Knife Show. Oh, yeah. Shout out, shout out to Ben, the one, the person who actually got one because he was wearing yes. a China D2 shirt. So thank wow, you, that, Ben. That blew our minds. I hope he knows that Like when, when we were standing, like, oh, my God, that guy's wearing a China D2 shirt. We're so cool. I know. We were <laughs> – I was so – I was probably more excited to talk to him than he was to us, so – <laughs> yeah, we were we were very excited. Thank you. Thank so, you, buddy. Yeah, we did we did get to hand out two out of three Kaisers to people wearing knife nuts uh merchandise. I think there was a guy named Roy as well who I gave one to. Yes. Yes. So shout out to him as well. Yes. Roy. I always like that name, Roy. Solid dude. So, solid dude, solid name. <laughs> Had knife nuts merch. Thank yes, you. Indeed. But again, we'll get into more of the stuff. I'm trying to isolate that all to the second half of the episode. You're trying to just keep all the good stuff from them. I know how you how you're playing this, Dave. Yeah. And Can we then, talk a little bit? There's two things I really want to get into before we start getting into other knives we've acquired. Um, because I, I mean, I post a lot of my stuff on Instagram anyway. You guys know what what we're getting at yeah. any given moment. But a couple special things happened in the past week. Number one, Brian released his second production knife for pre order. Oh shit! Yeah, we gotta talk high, about the Evo at a very special price. 
And it was like it was like a very special Christmas episode of Brian Ado Knives. That's what it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like the the heartwarming episode of Family Matters or Step by Step. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not Where everybody's no, usually at each other. But everybody's usually at each other's throats, but this was like his one love letter letter to all of his uh his uh fans. I thought that was nice. So you were able to get this amazing typhoon evolution. I don't like calling it the Evo Typhoon, personally. Call it whatever the fuck you want. It's just another gonna, typhoon, right? It's just another typhoon. Um, but it is amazing. It's a really good knife, guys. Like everyone who got in on that is gonna be stoked. Absolutely. When they get this knife. I mean they're gonna have to wait for it, but when they get it, holy crap. You you have to wait longer on mass drop for your knives, so one hundred percent. You have to wait longer on mass drop. Yeah, like Yeah, that not not to brief aside, that mass drop the uh what's the Gafco one? The Thresher. The Thresher. Still not delivered. No Although although I hear I hear uh that it's coming very, very soon. I would hope so. so. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's in the final stages. So if you order a Thresher, you're going to get it. Before Christmas, hopefully. I, it's seeming that way. That would be There's very some... unfortunate if it came after. <laughs> Brian, what were your thoughts on how, how did you feel about the your uh, Black Friday special? It went excellent. I was uh, surprised that so many people got in on it on that day, you know? I, I, re- I expected it to be popular. I don't, I don't think I expected it to go as you know as bananas as it did i mean you only have a few left right if any i the I, I ordered a couple extra so i'll, oh, I'll have a couple okay. extra it's just uh what am i going to do with them yet i don't know you know what's really funny is like a lot of people i've talked to th- their only regret is they didn't order a second one <laughs> dude it's so, it's nuts I, I think it was a good price you know for what you're getting i don't when was the last time you get a riot for that for, for under 300 bucks like never uh, that, right. that mass drop prism, if we're allowed to say that, which there was a crazy Black Friday sale on, but yes, there was. But but I don't even think that that knife was anywhere near. Oh, no, no, as no. it's nothing in in yeah. terms of complexity for what for, you're getting. I, yeah. In terms of a, a Riot product, it was on another level. Like they must have looked at that and been like, I, "I'm making a face now, but you can't tell what it is because this is radio." Yeah. Um, I mean, they really, they, I don't know if they went the extra mile for you, but it just turned out so well. They can't uh, help it go. He gives them all the, he gives them all the stuff. It really How is a great, it's it a great relationship. Yeah. Those, those like nearly microscopic little, um, it, details on the interior around the pivot, you know, where you put a little extra meat there. I mean, it was a great design, but the way they executed it, I was just very, very impressed. It looks like they really cared. I what? did a lot of little things to try to trick them up, like the chamfer that goes around the inside of the frame that goes up along the radius <laughs> where the fake, you know, trying to see how how good they do. I mean, th- they're good at what they do, no doubt. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And if, if people... I, I remember when, when it came in, that was the first time I've ever seen Brian get giddy over anything. I'm sorry I'm I interrupted you, Dave. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dave. No, 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 that's okay. I'm, I'm glad to hear... <laughs> because we always think of Brian as so morose. So I'm glad to hear it went well. But no, I Where's mean, your bomb for the word morose. You get that. <laughs> there we go. No, what I was going to say is if, if people think we're gassing Brian up just because we're friends with him and he's on the podcast, handle one of these. I There's no way you can be unimpressed. You might not like it personally, but the quality is just like is crazy. It's nuts. Brian, and we're friends, right? I think so sometimes. And you know, I thought so, but right. I don't know. But. <laughs> but I, we, were, we were talking when you were over here and we were playing with the Typhoons and we made that really terrible video. Um, we, you were looking at my other Typhoon, my first one, and you found – I didn't even know there was a number on it. I didn't know the, that original Typhoon was numbered. Can you guys guess which number I have? 420, 69. I don't know. What's a funny number? It's Running 13, out of funny number. but yeah. Okay. 13. So it was the 13th Typhoon. I didn't realize. I knew I was early in that list, but I didn't know I was that early. Damn. I, yeah. I, didn't, I never. I didn't really think about that. I forgot you got it direct. That makes me feel kind of old. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've been around in this hobby for a surprising amount of time compared to yeah. a lot of people. And that was one of Levon's first successful talent scouting missions. <laughs> was a he good was one. like, "This guy. This guy's going to be something." And I was like, "Are you sure? I don't think so." 
For yeah, true story. My, true mine story, went yeah. pretty badly. <laughs> Uh, except for Ray Lacanico, I'll say that one went pretty well. Uh, Lacanico, Jay <laughs> Kovac mm-hmm. was not quite. Um, I didn't pick that one that well. Let's just say that. I don't know, man. He's still riding that design. Maybe you pick better than everybody else, dude. I got it. That design is so iconic. He can live on that design alone. I got a DM the other day from from someone on Instagram. Uh, he'll know who this, but he was like, oh, man, I want one of these really badly. And then he sent me the picture of the CKF quite back. And I was like, no, oh, man, no. I failed you. Oh, no, I know. Right. But, but what's funny is that he could have got one like for what? 20 bucks. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So Black Friday deal. Black Friday for knives uh, last year and all the other years I've collected knives have been pretty terrible. This year there was incredible sales. There was uh, really nice. Not though. just CKF blowing their shit out, which pisses me off that they sell their knives for like 60 yeah. that's why i'll never buy a custom knife factory at retail oh absolutely not i mean it's, they, it's, they it's at the point where in the foot. Dude, it's almost like kind of insulting to the people who did pay yeah. retail when the knife came yeah. out they were excited about it it's like go fuck yourself here's the same knife for uh 60 60 percent off yeah it's crazy dude it is but there was a good see a good sales on kaiser Wii and riot like Actual sales. Yeah, actual sales. Because I, I will say our sponsors brought brought the brought the Black Friday heat with Black Month. Black Month, not just one day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't forget that. But yeah, it just seems like so much of uh, knife prices are uh, map or controlled that there's like really no way to have sales unless the manufacturers are cool with it. So they actually are calling it Black Month. It's not a not a not a joke. Yeah, we're not making a joke here. No, but I, I was Month. I was really pleased with the Black Friday offerings this year. I don't it's think true. I bought any from it, but I the only thing I got was this uh, this ZT that I'm incredibly impressed with. Yeah, too bad it's discontinued. Yeah, well, it's still in stock in places. I did check That's before there's, there's probably before plenty. we did this. So there's a couple of them out there. I also while while we were waiting to get this podcast started, I ordered one of the bare knuckles. Oh yeah, someone one of us has to order one. I, I would I right now, but I have been spending so much money on other things to make. Did you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? I know. I'm just saying that I, I wanted one, but yeah. it wasn't in the cards for now. It, well, it looks it looks good. Like it, it looks like they good. pulled off what they uh, what they intended to pull off. Brian sends a text to the to the group that says, "Smoking a bowl. Don't talk to me." <laughs> <laughs> we'll try our best to avoid it, Brian. Yeah, but yeah, that's the, perfect. I'm glad the bare knuckle is out. So ZT is in, as in Kershaw has had a fantastic year, but we'll have to do like another year in review episode. I wish the detent on my 0470 was was ex- existed. I mean, the, you know what's fun? Okay, you know what? No, let's let's get into that. So everyone says I'm the one that's obnoxious about detents. You constantly mm-hmm. use the phrase "doesn't exist" about detents. The 0470 <laughs> isn't that bad, man. What do you mean constantly? You said that about two different knives I have. The, uh, giant, the giant mouse and the CKF extra. Oh well, that was I wrong? I would say they have details. <laughs> They're just not die? strong. But did you die? No, th- your giant mouse. That thing was trash, dude. It's. I mean, it's it's not worth three hundred fifty dollars, as I, I will uh, say every time it comes up. I, I I will tell you, I like the shape of the knife. Yeah, I like the shape of it too. That's why I bought it, and I'm also a dumbass. So, <laughs> what well, else? Is I bu- I bought an Italian knife. I can't wait. I'm already hating myself for buying an Italian knife. What the the K Max from? Yes, one that yes. seems wildly overpriced. Yes, the Pelican. It is. It's incredibly overpriced. Like all Inc- Italian knives. Incredibly. I'm gonna get G10 scales, G10 backspacer, he- Damn. N6 N690 <sighs> blade. Fire. Fire. Right. And I thought you know it's two hundred and twenty dollars. Maybe it'll have titanium liners. No. Nope. Steel. Stainless steel. <laughs> Stainless steel. <laughs> But what's funny is, um, I ca- Jake bought me that Spyderco Euro Edge. I can't imagine it was any cheaper, and it has all the same things, but with worse steel. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't be happier with it. I mean, price isn't everything. It sucks. It's also, when, maybe uh, because I didn't pay for it. Yeah, yeah, that that helps. But I, that thing is expensive. But yeah, I love a my lot Euro. of Italian knives are expensive. So. What's the yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to getting it. It's it's a nice looking knife. It has a Spyderco wire clip on it too, which I thought was hilarious. A tad insult to injury. 
Uh, <laughs> I love the wire clip. And I like. I, I don't mind the wire clip, but I mean, let's be. It honest. looks cheap. <laughs> it's, it's it's like the cheapest thing you can do. If you if you show it to any non knife person, it looks cheap as hell. It's uh, a bent paper. I, I love it. Clip. It's, it's a, a paper it's, clip. It's, it's clippy. Paper clip. Damn, that's where Clippy went from it's Microsoft clippy. Word. It's his final form. Oh my god! That's why he's clippy. not in Microsoft Word anymore. They sacrificed him to put him on your knife. No, when Clippy holds aloft his magical sword and says, "I have the power." He becomes a spider co clip. <laughs> Is there something I can help you with? And then he does the weird eyebrow thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's clip. true. Clippy was weird. So but, uh, a couple other things in the acquisitionary uh, thing. Uh, I want to talk about Adam Purvis and the Knife Nut Special Edition. Okay. We still have so I much to cover. Yeah. I, I want to talk about that so bad, but I'm holding back. I want to talk about it so bad. But. To, t- to cover some other acquisitions that I've received or am receiving. I've got a lot of stuff in the mail, believe it or not. Um, one of the things that I did get that I'm, I'm enjoying and I'm really impressed with is the Mass Drop Gent in, with the rosewood scales and the tumbled stonewashed finish on the blade. I usually have a pretty good idea of what you are buying or have on the way. Totally forgot you ordered that one. I mean, do you remember when I ordered it? Oh, like shit, it was what? probably on the podcast, like, a long yeah, like six time years ago. ago. So yeah. it just arrived, and it's very nice. Um, it's a very nice knife. I think I can totally – I put a little post of it on the Instagram stating that I really do understand how it was a gateway knife for a lot of enthusiasts. Uh, and I'm not saying knife enthusiasts. I'm saying other enthusiast communities. You know, uh, if you think about – young younger people or the current generation and how they do things it's it's everything is unboxing this youtube that whatever it might be i have and there's a a draw towards um simpler tools as well you know shinola with their with their watch band with their with their watches journals things like that i think that whole crowd is going to eat this up and it's just a knife that is so simple in its design and functional and attractive that it's just going to have that mass mass appeal i think elliot really knocked it out of the park with this and I actually told him it it doesn't have the usual flair of a ferrum forge product but i think that's what gave it that mass appeal yeah you know? I, th- I think it's, it's probably for better rather than for worse here no, i think that's a it's a really good product so i uh i handled one richard rigsby lent me one of the original ones and it flipped super well mm-hmm. like it was really impressive other than the shitty satin finish it was well, that's what this one really got me because it has no shitty satin finish yeah. and like premium scale materials. So, hey, it's nice. I mean, they've sold thousands of those for a reason. Like, it's a it's a good knife. Like, it's a good not knife. bullshit. So, if you're if you're if you're listening to this and you want to get it, they're not they're not they're under a hundred bucks in some cases, right? I think if you get like the cheapest configuration, you, yeah, yeah, it's the same. It's the same knife. Yeah, just different scales and a finish. The, the blade steel and everything is the same. Yeah. I, I highly recommend that knife. I think it, it'll if you're looking for or if you're a knife enthusiast and you're getting a gift for someone, I think that is a really good one to get because they're in stock now. I think you can buy uh, all that stuff and it ships next day for Master Up. So depending on when we actually get this episode up, I think that would be a really good Christmas gift. Oh, absolutely. Or or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or what's another really you have fun to get holiday? the express shop that express shipping for Kwanzaa. I mean, not for Kwanzaa, for Hanukkah. Hanukkah started, right? Is that? Yeah. Isn't that the, yeah. It's one of the second or third day. I can't remember. Nice. Uh, but I also got a ZT in the 640. And let me let me oh. pose a question to you guys. How often do you get a knife and you don't like it and it actually grows on you? Because this is a very rare phenomenon for me. Um, I get a lot of knives. And it it. It is. It's rarer now than it ever has been. Yeah, I usually can like in like I get the knife in my hand. I can like snap of a finger. I can decide whether I like it and I'm going to keep it or if I'm just going to sell it. But mm-hmm. this is one where I really I was kind of unhappy with it at first and carried it for a weekend and uh, really like it now. So there there are certain things that like I wasn't necessarily expecting because I'm again a dumbass and didn't read the spec sheet very well. It's definitely like thicker than probably it needs to be. Thought, I wish it would be more like the fire tack, but I don't based know. Based on the based on the pictures, I thought it was going to be way thicker. And then you showed me the picture. I was like, eh. yeah, it's, it's not. It's not like crazy. It's just I thought it was going to be more like the fire, the hinder fire tack, which is another oh, boring right. knife that I really liked this year. And it, yeah, the fit and finish and action are so well done. 
because ET is you know they're I think they're underrated. As, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they get a lot of shit these days, and they get a, they got a lot of shit for this knife. Um, the green is hideous. That's not wrong. It looks bad. <laughs> like that was a big mistake on their Why, part. I, it's like a baby shit color. Uh, it looks just as bad it's in person. Up- Puce. Yeah, you just have to get over it. You have to decide if you can get over it or not, and I have. But everything else about it is really well done. The pocket clip is kind of terrible, though. It's that super narrow pocket clip that you can't... There's no clearance at all. Is, is it, it, the, it's the same is one it the, as on the 920. Probably. Yeah, isn't it the same three three, uh, three hole screw clip. one that's on my 920? Yeah. yeah and I, I haven't tried to pocket this yet. Is it, am I going to be really upset? Is it, does Hold it have on. like zero clearance? It doesn't seem to have a lot of clearance. It's the same no, it went, as on it, the. F- it went. It went. It's going. It's 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 perfect. Okay. It's working good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can easily switch those out anyway. They're the three holes. It's a standard size. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I like it a lot. The the jimping is probably the worst part, though. I know hard use knives. Jimping is actually kind of counterintuitive because you really don't want jimping if you're going to use something. I f- I feel like once. ZT's jimping is is just there for aesthetics. It it doesn't. No, this one's kind of painful. But then again, I do have. Bitch hands or, or pussy hands. I can't remember which one I have and which one Nick Shabazz has, but I definitely have either bitch hands or pussy hands. You got pussy hands. Yeah. Wait, is Both that a character from Sopranos? Yeah. Oh, Brian, are you back? I've been back. I got, oh. I, yeah, Brian, I figured you'd be the right one to chime in on whether I have bitch hands or pussy hands. Again, aren't they this, they're kind of the same thing, don't you think? I know. We could have a, a discussion about this, but yeah. Uh, ultimately, I like it a lot. It's going to get a ton of shit, and it has gotten a ton of shit. But it's just ZT. They like they get hated on. Yeah, it's, like, it's no one else the, in the industry right now. I'm trying to think of what the the proper analogy would be for that. Are they the Kanye West of of uh, of the knife world right now? Perhaps. I you know, mean, like you got to separate the artist from the art type thing. Yeah, I, I would kind of agree because ZT still make, I mean, they have a larger production scale, if I had to guess, than some of the Chinese companies we talk about, especially Riot. They, we know for sure they make more knives than Riot. And the fin finish is really, really good. So what are you complaining about? I don't know. Uh, most people were complaining about the locks failing, yeah. but, you know, well, yeah. that's no <laughs> <It's> good. <laughs> that certainly soured me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jake, this is another uh, Emerson designed ZT. You want to give it another shot? Yeah, I, I got really nine want, more fingers, man. You want the web redemption on this one? <laughs> that would be. I got nine more fingers. Thing. Bring it on. We need to do a Jake web redemption. That would be really funny. It locks up slightly deeper than than I don't know older ZTs did. So maybe it won't cut your finger off. Maybe it will. So I don't know. You're not going to keep it long enough for that to be. Nah, I'm going to keep it. I haven't gotten rid of any of this year's ZTs, and I've owned all of them but the 393. So. I'm really happy with ZT this year, but we'll do that in our wrap up episode. That's oh happen. Is this the last episode of this season, or do you think we're going to get one? I think we should get we one gotta more. we got to get out. one before the New Year's or before, before the New Year. Yeah, about like with our, the year show. Oh, yeah, our best of, our best of 2018 is yes. coming up. <gasps> oh, no, we got to do it every sitcom class. and just do a clip show. Oh, my God, that's true. Like, we like could when Brian was now. talking about us just editing out old parts for Jake and just putting yes. them in. <laughs> Like a clip yeah. show, man. I'm good with that. We get an episode, an episode, and you're basically doing all the work. What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Did I get? Did I have that uh, that Blade Runner Systems knife when we talked last? Uh, you brought it with you to. The yeah, I know I brought it. Show. Okay, I think you might have. Yeah, you mentioned it because because we mentioned the price. Oh, uh, we mentioned the uh, yeah Kershaw yes. being the yes. OEM. Correct. Kershaw's OEM. Correct. Jake. Do you want to talk about the copper natrix? I bet that's something people actually really do want to hear about because that's a super anticipated, hyped up knife. Sure. I'll just go through my acquisitions and, and when I get to it, I'll I'll dwell forever until Brian kills himself. Um, <laughs> You're already taking a long time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I got a new backpack. I, I would like to spend, oh. I, I think, 45 minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You guys, yeah, I cannot uh, believe how much shit I got at. You know, I cannot predict what our listeners like latch onto, but it was the Monroe transfer and that yeah. fucking backpack. Monroe transfer. I knew that was going to be a hit. How? We didn't even invent it. Like at least China D two like came from our brains. <laughs> it's funny. It did come from our brain. Well, it came from my brain, and and uh, I think maybe South Park. I can't remember, but. Truthfully, we had talked about that. I was like, I'm going to talk about the Monroe transfer on this episode. Yeah. And, and you guys were like, what the fuck's a Monroe transfer? I 100% didn't expect that to be a hit, but yeah. like, fuck it. The backpack and Monroe transfer. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. There are now classics like China D2 
and China D2. And that's our it. only classic. And allegedly, maybe. <laughs> allegedly is not a thing, no matter tree, how hard you try shit? to make it. Tree shit, we tried to make a thing. No one gives a fuck about tree shit. Damn, that hurts. I it's true, that. though. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's funny to us, you know. And the 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 deep the deep cut listeners they know tree shit. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Jake. Um, okay, so who who remembers the cupping washers Spiderco Positron gate of twenty seven? Every every knife they made on bearings, you mean? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, so. Here's the short version. They're nine thousandth the the washers that that separate the <laughs> the the ball bearings from riding on copper, which is like roughly as soft as a booger, are nine thousandths of an inch thick, which means they're most certainly going to cup uh, under you know like average pivot tightness or even below average pivot tightness or just regular use over the course of you know a week or a month or whatever, <clears throat> which I was surprised by. It's the first Kershaw product that that has committed that mortal sin, that, uh, to my knowledge, because before that it was just Spider Crow, obviously. So I, did, you know, I, I did, dove into my what, what do we call this repertoire of knife parts, looking for replacements, and I'm sure I'll have to cut the pockets a little deeper um, to fit it. But the, I guess the point is the knife is worth it. I mean, it, it's a knife that came with a flaw from the factory, but. Kill me. <laughs> but it's worth it. I love it. I love it anyway. Oh, and it was a gift from Levon. Uh, and in case that was him saying kill me. It uh, wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> that was definitely not, Brian. It was Brian. I'm not grateful. <laughs> I was Brian. Oh, I thought that was I thought that might be you uh, like no. being Brian's inner mile inner monologue. No, I'm excited to hear about it. I think this is a nice anyway. people want to hear about. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of chicane. A lot of chicanery in this podcast right now. Yeah. Anyway, the, na- the copper natrix is awesome. Otherwise, it's a cool uh, little knife. Real fast. <laughs> All right. Okay. What? What else did you get? Uh, theta and a feist. <laughs> okay. No, the, the, you already the talked mentions. Yeah. <clears throat> what what um, other projects you got working on? Jake's project corner. His cone of silence. <laughs> I want to spend some time at talking about this backpack I got. Uh, no, that's it's not it, funny I anymore. Worst, I got the worst Orla. Or or la or or, Lavan and I bought the same knife, and one of them was titanium, and the other one is steel, and that is a true story. Uh, oh, yeah. Is this knife? So we yeah, Lavan bought a a Vipon uh, oh Canto Quaken thing from a brand called Capital O E R Capital L A one word. Or well, la. it's it's the same as you know who else released that knife is uh, one of the Tucson Tucson. That's it. They, yeah, it's a yeah. Tucson. It's a knockoff of a knockoff, and mine is a knockoff of a knockoff of a knockoff, and there might be another one in there too. Uh, so basically, it's a huge brick of steel. Yeah, is that the knife you uh, rolled up to the New York show with? I did yeah. bring it. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the one you had in your pocket when we got there. Like you know, people try to bring like their coolest knives to show off. You come with the fucking ten dollars worst of steel, worst knife ever. I mean, literally the worst knife ever. It fits, Jake. Uh, so. That. I got that. I have a Aegis Hoplite in right now to uh, to for, for that, an that actually is the missing D10 ever. and missing lock. You have to defoculate it. Let me just oh say real God. quick: the D10 does not exist. Was that one made by Millet? Yeah. Okay. Enough said. You, what, what's really funny about it is so were all of those. Uh, <laughs> Those Burnley, oh, no, uh, <laughs> no. The, the Burnley side pops. They're all made yeah. by Millet. Oh, if you canceled your, if you canceled your order, you are not even allowed to talk about the Burnley side pop. I canceled every order. Wait, what? Whereas I did not. What did I miss? Jake uh, and I had this whole thing yesterday when the side pops went up. Oh, on Blade, Blade HQ. HQ. Yeah, so we're all gonna buy one and become millionaires. <laughs> and then we realized they were made by Millet. Oh, so you'll never get them. Even if they're in stock, you'll never get they're it. They're in stock at Blade HQ. I mean, no, it's still not going to come to you somehow. Yeah, f- that was really for me. That was really bad. First, it was like, uh, "Oh, can I actually get one of these before they sell out?" They're selling out quickly. They always do. And then it was like only five more dollars for free shipping. Or, and then it was only whatever more dollars for to spend two hundred and get a free hat. Uh, and that that just <laughs> snowballed into a very large 
order you, that you, I you blacked need. out and I actually don't need any. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. you blacked out and woke up and you bought like two hundred dollars on a on a mass produced nuck. <laughs> oh, and a, and all all I'm getting out of it is free shipping for a knife that I wanted to give someone as a gift, and it didn't make the cutoff for free shipping. Don't forget, don't so, forget your like knife and fork that you're gonna get as well. Oh my god! Oh, I added yeah, whatever to all the blade. Did, did you just black out and pick all the junk that like? You no, know, you got free. Oh, junk. These are the free. Yeah, these are the this free items. They, they make up for things by giving you giving you items. Okay. Yeah, spend a hundred thousand dollars on on nothing and you get on a, a free. A hundred thousand yeah. dollars on on CRKT Eaton tools. Yes, yeah, yeah, Eaton tools, but it's not the Eaton tool. I still have my Eaton tool. I do too. Liang Ma represent. Yeah, I, I right. still I still have mine. <laughs> Jake, that was an impressive number of acquisitions for you. Yeah, you never spend any money, but then apparently you black out and spend hundreds of dollars on. You, should, you, you, you don't know you don't know Jake like I do. I knew him in his prime. <laughs> this dude, this dude threw down. I will tell you that. Yeah, well, this would be the opportune time to do it since we have a podcast. We need the same way now. I am with knives. He he used to be with cars. Oh, that's much more expensive. Yeah. All right. I can see why Jake doesn't buy that many knives now. Yeah, he's he's over it. I've had just under 30 cars. I think 28. Jesus Christ. And none of them were stock. It's not like he didn't dump money into them after the fact. Wow. Yeah. Jake, how's your credit score? Uh, oh, it's 7, 730 something. 734. And what's your I social just, security I literally number? just looked at it this weekend. <laughs> Uh, that is two zero one six four. Hold on, I gotta get the sensor beep in here. Yeah, which I, I just made those. Numbers I thought you were getting a pen and paper. Uh, uh, yeah. If anyone uh, no, if anyone wants to come live my life, we can trade. Uh, I'll, I'll take whatever yours is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so get my social and let's do this. <laughs> You get to live in the basement, <laughs> your fortress of solitude that you're trying to construct. We're just, it's a couple yeah, that, of sheets. That's the cover for the next episode. It's just Jake's cone of silence. <laughs> it's, it's just I'll a send bunch you. of sheets take, hanging up, man. I'll take a photo. Well, they are actual acoustic sheets. <laughs> they're, they're, it's keeping the they're, sound in. Don't lie, just, those are 600 thread count Egyptian kind sheets, man. I can spot that from a mile away. He counted yeah, each I'm thread. Send you a link. I'm gonna send you a link to what Jake. Definitely got. thought the high thread count would block out more yeah. low frequency it's, sounds. It's more dense. It's more dense. It's I, I more even dense. used to have a, a recording studio. Remember, Levon will verify. He did. It was a hole in Jake. in in the sta- I guess it was a part of the stairwell. Where the hell was that? It no, it wasn't the stairwell. It was just like it was like another room, a secret room in the wall. It was like a panic room. Dude, Gear Geeks Live used to do. They did like three episodes, one where they interviewed each host. We need to interview Jake at some point. I need answers about this stuff. I don't think anyone wants to hear interviews about any of us. <laughs> that's very including true, Brian. Actually. Like, hey, Brian first gets inter- was an interview with Brian. Yeah, that's true. Brian has a whole episode dedicated to him. He does. Maybe we do need to do this. Yeah. Yeah. He Brian's the only one. <laughs> that was. A, oh wait, no, that wasn't the blue sandwiches episode. I don't remember that blue waffle. <laughs> don't try and make that. I, you already did the Monroe transfer. Don't try and make blue waffles our thing now. Like blue waffles. I mean, come on. We're high. Like we're highbrow. Or this is not shocky. We're it's a poo- but blue poo- waffle humor. is incredibly safe for work, especially if you go on images. That is true, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blue. Im- you can just go on Google Images and type in blue waffle, and you're going to get nothing but you know nice stuff. Should we talk about? The progeny now because I have yes. looked at, I've looked at our list of new acquisitions yes. and we're done with that. Yes. Oh, how excited are you guys? Because I'm stoked. Hold on, I, I I'm gonna have to find a drum roll a clip and add it Get to the soundboard and then sound. Uh, I'm panicking. A sound. Oh, yes. Progeny. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me add progeny to the great apocalypse here. Uh, can you do I'm that? I say oh. Progeny of the Great Knife Nuts podcast list or something. Well, there's the name of the episode. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. Uh, I like that album, by yeah, the way. I can't yeah, imagine. It. Hold on. I wonder if I can play this really quietly while 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 you talk. No, about it. it's not going to work. Okay, go ahead. Try it. Oh, oh that was really so quietly. It's <laughs> really loud. 
<laughs> oh my god! One one more millisecond, and this whole thing would have gotten pulled from the. It's the so true. Podcast. <laughs> That's true. So, the Groth is going to come and rip our throats out. Wait, is that how it's pronounced? That's so much cooler than the way I pronounced it. Yeah, he's how, he's going to channel his inner nineteen nineties Lars and come oh. kill us. I'm embarrassed yeah. to admit this. I always thought it was Shagrath. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for admitting that, though. <laughs> oh, let, before we get into that, let's just talk a little bit about Shagrat. breathe, spect, walk. Are you talking to me? Um, breathe. <laughs> oh, okay. Spect, <laughs> walk. Those are the lyrics, yeah, so, man. So, I'm sure a lot of our audience knows the Pantera song "Walk." And there's a part in the song where Phil screams re and then spect and then walk. And all of this time, this is an iconic song. I mean, the song came out in what? 1993? 94. Brian would know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and he had the lyrics wrong. And it was really funny. <laughs> but, that's, but I digress. Um, so we teamed up with Adam Purvis who is a great guy, a an great person in the community, does a lot for the knife community besides release some awesome designs with some awesome people. He's um, playing you with Timascus clips. And me. has, yeah, of course, he's he does a lot of cool stuff. He's known for making Timascus clips. He brought out the Primordial, which is I think is still one of the coolest knives of this year. Um, and he his latest production knife, which is manufactured by Best Tech, we were able to do a series of 30 of them dubbed as knife nuts special editions which is really cool and it's a knife that i have no problem putting our name on because i've been carrying the prototype for months so i know it's going to be good and our special um, edition is not just a logo as well it's not just a logo so we actually went through and, and our our knives our 30 which are all already spoken for by the way which was incredible i had no expectations whatsoever. We were nervous to do 30. Yeah, we didn't want to do that many at all. And the response from you guys just gave us, uh, I don't know, we were, we were slightly away. emotional. Yeah. It's, it's, I was, it was we were crazy. very impressed. So thank you all who got into that. But ours will be a dark, tumbled, uh, blasted stone wash on the frames. We'll have a satin blade, none of a double satin blade, so it'll have hand-rubbed flats and satin bevels and a blurple uh, pocket clip and uh, uh, backspacer. Our, uh, our logo will appear on the opposite side of the blade flat. So Adam's will be on the show side. Ours will be on the lock side. And we're going to painstakingly takingly number each one of these knives before we send them out to you, hopefully with a few goodies too. So everyone who got in on that, hopefully you feel like you got your money's worth. Um, I think the pricing on those knives was pretty that, incredible. I think that's why they sold so fast. The, the I price think that was helped. great. I mean, I I really appreciate that people wanted to help us out, but it, the price I think definitely was a big big selling point. You get M three ninety, you get the titanium frame lock, you get a, a a design that was a collaboration with Elijah Isham. It was it was originally one of Adam's custom knives that he used to build, and Elijah took it and Elijah fied it. Yeah, and so he did a hell of a job. Mm -hmm. I got to handle the proto too, since Levon has it. It's awesome. I'm I'm really impressed with it, and like Levon said, it's we wouldn't put our name on it if it was a bad knife, and it's certainly not. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. But I we, think people are going to be really happy with them. The exciting, the very exciting thing about this for us is that we know we can do stuff like this, and it's going to be a lot of fun for us, and hopefully you guys will benefit from it too. Uh, mm -hmm. And. Uh, we're just looking forward to it. And guess what? So since it was really close to the, uh, you know, the production date for those knives, I think a lot of you guys may even have them before Christmas. Yeah. That was I don't want to over promise, but it's a possibility that you'll get them before Christmas. If we can do that in the future, I really, I will say that is one thing I really liked is that we were able to take people's money only very shortly before they came out and not right. have to do it like real far. In right. I mean, it's it's hard on us too. It's not like we're we have like a. I mean, Jake might. By the next time I go over there, I'll have a shipping station halfway complete, and it will stay halfway complete. <laughs> He's got the Pitney Bowes machine mm -hmm. on deck. And uh, got Pitney Bowes, you know this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's 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 awesome. And if 
I mean, if we can get this kind of interest in the future, it'll really like enable us to take on sort of riskier, or bigger runs or something. Like we got really lucky that we got to piggyback or probably more appropriate is to, we got to be parasites on Adam's run of the progeny. Mm-hmm. So, and eventually maybe we can do our own, which is the, the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that is where your money is going towards guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trying to get something like that together. Cause it is so much more money up front than I realized. Yes. And I mean, especially since none of us really have talent except for Brian and maybe Jake. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I drew a picture of the knife. You did draw a picture of the knife. I like it. It looks like an indie album cover. Mm. I and I also tasty. named the knife. I named yeah. the knife. It is a great name. I also I don't think it's been used, so we no one no, no one's getting a C D here. N- Nalu was upset because we uh we got to it before he did. And I was like, in before the cease and desist, bitch. <laughs> Why did Nalu want to use it? <laughs> yeah, and Nalu said he wanted to he was that was something that he wanted to use, a, a name he was planning on using Dude, there are so many obscure metal songs that we can use as names that we'll I never, mean, we'll never it, was, it was such an obvious choice because both uh elijah and i are are both big celtic frost fans and it's a, it's a progeny is also a celtic frost song yeah off of uh, so, monotheist correct secondly it follows oh, in the line of of adam's knives the pr- the primordial and the progeny it, that is it makes so it makes so much sense I was really. Uh, let me just it, tell you, it might I be was, Lavon's first naming that that's not a complete failure. Yeah, it's it's the second. <laughs> the second. I yeah, did John Gray on splitter. Brian. No, I warmed up on on John Gray, the splitter. Oh, okay, but also Progeny is good because we're pro- you know the Doom Borgir song Progeny is the Great Apocalypse. So this these knives are going to herald the apocalypse, aka more knives from us. So it's very metal. It is. I really. It's what, what I thought was really funny. It'll have a picture of Brian's knife on this knife. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny that our logo is someone else's knife. Yes, that's not that strange. That's, that's been funny. Done. I'm just. I'm thinking of the Chris Dagger on one of the most famous knife makers of all time, Marfione, and, and others. Oh, oh, there they are. It's it's definitely a, a cool thing to be a part of, and. Uh, we're very, maybe maybe very we happy. should have done more than thirty. Is is I think important. I think we got a, a. I mean, to be fair, we made thirty five. Yeah, but those are for us. The other those ones. are for us because we're nerds and we wanted a knife with our logo. I mean, what, on it. What's the point of having? Also, made? we'll be giving number thirty away. So, oh yes, number thirty true. is going to go to one of our Patreon subscribers at the twenty five. That what is it? The filthy. What level is that? China D two. China D two for you. Yes. If you're on our Patreon at the China D2 for you level, you're entered in a quote unquote contest. Yes. Because you can't say it's a raffle. Yes. If you are not, if you have not joined our Patreon, we would super appreciate it. But yeah, it, it, we even can't if say you join for one month, month. Even if you join for this month and and cancel next month, you'll still be in the running to win this knife. So we'll put this out, you know, on Friday or I assume by the end of the week, this episode will be out. Yeah. Um, and we'll be giving away that that uh, special edition progeny. Yep, number it, it was It'll be numbered. Back. It'll be numbered number number thirty too. So they're also going to be hand numbered by Levon, which we have not brought up. We did bring it up, did we? But you know, you just don't listen to me. I don't know. I, 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 beer. Yeah, I I have an I'm engraving so tool that I've never used. Talk to someone else like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I oh. give what I get. What a relief. <laughs> Speak, speaking of relief actually no we'll, we'll have to talk about <laughs> Tim's, Tim Reeves podcast later it was so friendly oh, yeah. it was such a friendly atmosphere you were, you were opposite, nerding out you were nerding out the exact opposite of the MacMath podcast where we have to jump down each other's throats constantly it's so, you were ready every single thing you were like you. that's right you were jumping down my throat every yeah, single dude, yes, moment. Yeah, I couldn't turn and on podcast like, mode. And I was like, whoa, Dave, this is not our show. I know. We can, like, relax and be yeah. nice to each other. But this is our show, so fuck you. Fuck all of you. Let's get back into it. I'm into it. All right. So we'll roll that into what the big, the big, t- the overarching topic is the New York Custom Knife Show. And the Knife Read, uh, Knife News Choice Awards. We got a lot of stuff if we wanted to do oh, that. Oh, fuck. Oh, I guess we should do the knife. Let's just go through the knife news stuff. I don't want to give it any more 
yeah. clout than it deserves. Yeah, this isn't so even like the full thing. Let's just go through a couple of the notables because there were some in there. So I just turned my head to the side and was like, what the fuck? I'm pretty sure we should have done these really badly last year because they were like the ones that were selected by retailers and they were mm-hmm. just such obvious shills. And this year yeah, it's less obvious the, shills. So. It's the same thing. Who else, yeah. Who voted for these? That is a good point. Where, where was the voting open? I, I don't – I never – I mean, I, I'm on Knife News all the time. I don't think I ever got to yeah, vote. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see any option to vote on these. But at least they seem less transparent because they actually picked good shit for some of them. Some of them. Yeah. Yeah, some, specifically some. Elijah's Black Star. And but what four, else? The Zero Tolerance 470, but the competition it was put up against is really strange. Uh, what we're, okay, so let's just get the yeah. Elijah's out of the way. That was voted for best slip joint. Which actually had some really strong competition. One of them being the Manly Wasp, which we all love. Oh, I love that knife. That is exactly. a great knife. The Wasp is dope. I got to handle yours. That was your, that's a good knife. Kaiser Zip Slip, which has the ever flush backspring. Um, oh, that's from those are all those are, those are all good knives. Yeah, a, a Great Eastern Cutlery knife, which is identified with numbers, so I have no goddamn idea. Mm-hmm. And then the Three Rivers Manufacturing Viator, which people oh yeah, is, that's also good. Yeah, I didn't think we the, handle that at the show? Uh, I th- yes, but the liner lock version is cooler. So the liner lock version is very nice. Yeah. So, right. but yeah, so Elijah won that. I think he deserves that one for the black side. Black star's really cool. But cool that was design. actually there was some neat engineering on it. That's that, for sure. That was some real competition. That wasn't like the Grammys or something where they just sort of throw a award away. But, it makes me sort of question everything. But every other category seems so weird. Yeah. Like what? what uh, go ahead. You um, go through them, Dave. Sure. So zero tolerance, zero. Well, this is really not building the suspense, but these aren't very suspenseful. Uh, the 0470 from zero tolerance won best new high end knife of the year. Mm. I'm not upset about that. I like that knife a lot. We both have them. It's so competi- were there any, were there any Chinese knives in the competition? No. Aha. Okay. Yeah. I see a trend here, but okay. although the uh, technically Elijah's knife is made in China, but the competition was the Benchmade Micro Pocket Rocket. That was four hundred dollars. That tiny little knife. Yeah, that, that thing's awful. That thing was triple styrofoam. If it was but an album, there's such an amount of dedicated Benchmade buyers. It is. It is did, insane. Did those be- dedicated Benchmade buyers buy this knife? I, I guess so. there are literally people that li- buy only Benchmade and every Benchmade that comes out. They have their their friend at the gun store calls them when the new Benchmade comes out and they come over and buy them. I don't want to live that life. There's people that do that with chicanes too. It's a crazy world. (laughs) No, there's one guy who does that with chicanes. A lot of chicanery. Uh, The Giant Mouse GMP5. So you handled mine. We know your feelings on that one. Mm. The Grayman Knives Taiga? Taiga, like the rapper Taiga? No. I, I don't want a taste of that knife. No. Shout out to the two people who got that reference. And then the Spyderco Hanan, which was the uh, Brad Southern compression lock flipper with the awful blade shape with that huge recurve and Ricasso. And no oh, one liked why? it. That, so that, those were apparently the top. Those were the tier popular knives. knives. The Riot Jack isn't on there, apparently. Yeah. N- well, none of, none of Riot's knives are. What a coincidence. Mm. So I guess I'm okay with the 470 getting that one there. Mm-hmm. But. How about best value folder going to the CVVVVVVVV backlash? Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, but look what it was up against. The Buck 110 slash 112 lightweight models. Mm. I hear they're okay, but they're still overpriced. The K-Bar Jarrah's flipper. Which is not not terrible, but I mean, it's not a a comparison. No. Uh, The Kaiser Doman, pretty somewhat comparable. Decent knife, yeah. And the Steel Will Modus. All right, I, I'm fine with Civivi right, that's, getting that's that one. Right. I, honestly, I think the Civivi is pretty incredible. And now, so those were the good awards. Uh, the rest of them were horseshit. So wait, those Civivis, I think they're on sale in some places for like 37 bucks, dude. Christ. Those yeah. are so good. I, I, find, I got to handle that in person. And that, yeah. Jesus, and mine has the, the, what is it? The Zerkutai uh, backspacer and pocket clip. It's so ridiculous. I'm going to carry that. It reminds me of when people would send uh, spider coat tenacious as tenacious. 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 To to Jeff to do ridiculous things and spend like three times the cost of the knife. It's true. But so there's still some like big awards. That was all the rage in the beginning. Yeah. Back -hmm. back in the day. There's still three like big awards to be announced or Mm. uh, yeah. Still three big awards to be announced. But I don't know. Stay tuned to our Instagram. I usually post uh, 
my feelings towards the winners in gift form in gift form in my Instagram story. Yeah. Frank Reynolds really uh, talked about it in the last one. So hopefully, uh, <laughs> yeah. Derivative. Nope. Derivative. Nope. Yeah. Nope. I, I'm not interested in these. They, they still feel kind of fake. The awards. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all a thing. It's like the MTV music awards. Absolutely. It's yeah. It's just funny because it's the Reader's Choice Award this year, not the manu- not the retailers. Oh, they listen yeah. to our feedback. Dude, I'm sure everybody was real stoked for the Zoo Blade Work Shrapnel. What the for, hell is that? Tactical new fixed blade. How much is that knife? Way more money than I think it's going to be. Really? Um, well, I can tell you it's apparently sold out on their website, but let me oh, tell well, you how you much go. it is. <laughs> It is two hundred and seventy nine goddamn um, dollars. Oh, that's that's get the that's, fuck out of here. That's more than I thought by I'm, a long shot. I, will I thought it was twenty bucks. Three sixty windmill slam dunk that shit right into the trash. I would pay to see you get air. Dude. I will. I would do it with the the fucking trampoline you're literally, setup. You're literally one of the whitest people I've ever seen in my life. Hey man, Woody Harrelson proves that we can do it too. Okay. Let me throw in the ad spot here, and then we can talk about the uh, yeah. New York show. Sounds good. This episode of the Knife Nuts podcast is brought to you in part by PVK Vegas. PVK has been selling knives on the internet since 1996. They are the largest microtech dealer in the United States, specialize in automatics and balisongs, and have a strong selection of high-end customs. Visit their showroom on the Las Vegas Strip, a five-minute walk from the USN show. Use coupon code KNIFENUTS for 5% off your order. Well... We're back. I don't think I'll ever get used to listening to that. I think it sounds professional. It's good, man. I have my uh, my British friend. She's <laughs> going to record it. It's going to be better, I promise. Okay. You can actually follow her on Instagram preemptively. Um, I forgot her name on there, though. So Solid plug, really, man. Yeah, it's going to be really hard for me to do that. Solid plug. Uh, what is it? It's UK Chardonnay. That's her name. There we go. Yeah. I'll put it in go. the show notes. Yeah, UK Chardonnay. All right, wh- why don't you get the story out of the way of how long it took you guys to get there? Because I know oh it's going to happen. God. Well, no, I mean, of course, the day we're going to go to this knife show, we, we expected a dusting of snow. And we're like, oh, already we were like, of course, it's going to snow when we're going to drive to New York or New Jersey. And uh, it turned out to be a fucking blizzard that no one was ready for. And it was... I mean, it was legitimately like four inches, but it it crippled New York and New Jersey. No one was... We did not see... It took us... So from from my house to that hotel, we do this trip a couple... Like, we used to do it a couple times a year. Um, Maybe two hours, and it's a breeze. You know, we hang out in the truck, we, you know, shoot the shit, and we're there. This was a trek, a six-hour trudge from my house to the front door of this hotel and 100% concentration trying not to veer off the road after so many already had. In, it in was four-wheel drive on the on I the drive a, I drive a truck with, you know, decent tires and four-wheel drive and all sorts of stuff. Did not help. Yeah. Did not help. Dude, the, the preparation was so bad. Uh, I mean, like, I listened to a bunch of podcasts with people that live in New York City, and everyone was stuck in their car for, like, nine hours getting home from New York City, New Jersey. It was nuts. It was... It would I, have helped if... It would have helped if da- uh, if Jake got here, you know, early, <laughs> like he said he was going to, but... That it's all happen. Jake's fault. It is. And then, amazingly, I got stuck in none of this, so... Yes. But, this, yeah, so that already was kind of a bad start to the show, a Tons of flights and got canceled. People crashed on the way there. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Say, uh, Sebastian crashed. Well, he's fine, but like so he's fine, and he bought a Mustang, so he's ready for the next snowstorm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he should have gone one with the live rear axle too, so he can go backwards into a tree. Well, that'll be at the first car show he goes to. <laughs> yeah, all he, all he has to do is C- go to cars a car and coffee. Show in a Mustang. Yeah, he's, he's got to go for cars and coffee when he's leaving. Ends yes, up, exact, exactly. Ends up on another plane of existence because yes. it fucking spins <laughs> out the car. Yeah, I have a specific meme in mind too, uh, but I can't even think about it. But anyway, um, yeah, it really caused an issue with a lot of people. So 
Um, some people didn't get in until Saturday. Um, some people, I think, probably didn't come at all, if I had to guess. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a real shit show getting there. But we didn't really – we all made it on Thursday. And then Thursday night, got to go to my first n- knife enthusiast insiders party. And by party, I mean it was literally us, Elijah, Mark Begg, and Jeremiah. <laughs> and Matisse. Yeah. Yeah, but it was, it, was, it was awesome. Yeah. We got to handle a lot of Elijah's new stuff. Mm-hmm. Um Got to see some things that are coming out. That stuff for me is way more fun than the show itself. Yeah, that that was that was fun. Just sort of shooting the shit with people, and, and it was it was nice to meet everybody, especially like Jeremiah. I mean, he he definitely took a chance on us by sponsoring us. Um, yes. The first real like legitimate person to give us a sponsorship when we're yes, our we content is pretty crude. So that was really cool he's, to meet him in person. He's got an eye for talent, just like Levon. Yeah. So <laughs> shout out to you, Jeremiah. Synergy synergize you'll get it right anyway yeah so it, it was just it was cool and it's kind of surreal to be in the room with people who are quote-unquote big this was your first knife, knife show though so yeah was- let's let's preface this this is my first knife show and it's just it was just strange i still can't really get over the fact and i'm curious to hear you guys thoughts about this for better or for worse this podcast has given us access to people and knives we would not have had access to before like Mark Begg showing us prototypes on his phone and stuff is just like, this wouldn't have happened before the podcast. And I don't, I don't know how to handle it in a way that doesn't make us seem like cool insiders and like elitist dicks. So stick with know. me, kid. I'll, I'll show you the ropes. Yeah. It's just I, like, say, I know, I know how to handle it. it. It was before the podcast. You just have to be a social being. I don't know. <laughs> like there, there's some, to some, I've always felt skeptical about how, about, you know, people's motives when they're being friendly. Yeah, with I mean, so, you just got to take everything down a notch because everybody's there for the same reason for the most part. I mean, don't get me wrong. When you're at the show, like, uh, uh, first off, the amount, I mean, that night, let me just, let me rewind because we're in bed and then Aaron storms through the door. Actually, he comes in rather ninja-like because that dude, our drive was a cake, our drive was a cakewalk compared to Aaron Frederick. So that dude drove 12 One, hours two. from... 22, 22 hours. hours. 22 hours. He was stuck in the car. <laughs> yes. And was still singing the Baby Shark song the whole time. Yeah, he was. How was he still Dude, jolly when he, he got, got there? He got in I at 4 a.m., went to sleep, woke up three hours later, started drinking beer, and went to the show. Like nothing happened. Yeah. That man is yeah, an He woke me up the next morning with a beer in his hand and no, no. clothes on. Well, that's not a feat, Jake. Like you. you yeah, we're, we'll get talk to that about that. In it's a, a thing too. when he dr- when he got there at four a.m. after that was incredible. Truck. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he did it. people use the word colorful to describe people. He truly is colorful. He is he is one of God's own prototypes. I I, I just he's not a person I would have ever met outside of this hobby, and it's just like it is just crazy. And here you are sh- sleeping four feet, feet away, away from him. Yes, yes. <laughs> in, in his tidy whitey. Singing the baby shark song. <laughs> singing the baby shark song. <laughs> and drinking three lion's heads for breakfast. Yes. It's <laughs> I'm glad we got you those fucking lion's heads, too. That was right. the other thing. We, we made a pit stop for, for Dave's shitty beer. You guys are too nice. I uh, really we, expected we, you guys we to, wanted to get you. We, we literally said, though, seriously, if this place doesn't have it, Dave's not getting his fucking beer. That would have been fine with me, man. <laughs> but we did want to bring it to you. And we, I'm glad we did. Yeah. Because I drank. Bring me beer. What even is oh, that? that? Aaron it's saying, bring, Aaron saying bring me beer after oh, having that, was that his like Yankee accent. What the hell was that? That was him leaning into the camera and saying, bring me beer to all the people who are on their way to the show. <laughs> all I hear is the baby shark song. Yeah. All I hear. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we, we spent a million dollars to take an Uber half a mile to hang out with the guys. And then, Eventually went back, and then at 4 a.m., Aaron stumbles in. And then, mm-hmm. What, what a way to stuff. start day uh, day one of the uh, of the show. And don't forget the backpack. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. But the next day uh, was really great. Uh, the amount of people that came up to us at the show, I, I can't believe it. Seriously, thank you, everyone who said hello. It was great meeting everybody and seeing everyone again. It's, it, it's sometimes I, I take for granted how many people we've gotten to know over the course of not just this podcast, but just being in the hobby itself. So we really, really appreciated that. I think a landmark moment was when we went to go see Sal Monero. 
Oh yeah, and this is definitely the most important thing in the whole show. He just starts as we start walking by. He starts as we start approaching the table. He starts humming our theme song, which was that the most amazing mind. thing in the world. I so, would have never in a million years imagined that, that he listened. I to feel it. like we were touched by the hands of Christ. Damn. I was I was absolutely flattered. Yeah, yeah. Salmonar was I a nice guy too. Flattered like that in a very long time. Thank you, mm. Sal. He was very cool. It was it was really and his knives are incredible. Let's just yeah. put that out there. Really nice. You know what people always say that the show is about people and not about the <laughs> knives. I yeah. finally figured out why because a lot of the knives fucking suck. And <laughs> <laughs> Sal's knives are not in that category. They were oh man. If we're gonna and get then, into the show on Friday, there were a lot of bad knives, man. There were a lot of bad knives, but we we made our way to some good stuff. Like yeah, you were like the fucking Ken- mayor. Just wandering around. Well, which is good because I really didn't want to be doing the schmoozing and networking. So at I'm that show, I can mayor it. pretty good because there's not many people. Like yeah. I know a lot, and you can see everyone from a mile away. Yeah, so it's, everyone. It's easy. So all I hear about is Blade, and it's like, oh, you can't see everything in one. Blade day. was overwhelming, dude. Like that in is New York a crazy show. Time. You definitely can see everything in about ten minutes. So more than that, it's a lot, was a, this yeah. was, there was a lot of stuff there. Compared, I think there were more this year than there was last year. There, there was a pretty good amount of tables, but it was like mm-hmm. you could you could definitely see it all in an hour if you didn't talk uh, to anybody and just looked at the knives and then moved on. Oh yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, Ken Steigerwalt was a stand up human being. Yeah, I mean the, the the he just as cavalierly let us handle his ridiculously nice knives, which are yes. just as crazy in person as they seem. Amazing. I um, waited longingly by uh, by Tom Crine's name little nameplate at his table. Uh, <laughs> Only to be disappointed and stuck in the storm and didn't get there until Saturday. Um, but he was also just as lovely. He uh, was. I, I didn't get the opportunity. Was, I barely he, you, had le- you literally left maybe five minutes before he walked. Uh, after he walked in the door. I saw him for like a second on Saturday and then that was it. I yeah, didn't get the he, opportunity to talk to him or anything. I, it was a flurry of activity. When I first saw him, I, I, there was a bunch of people talking to me. And I was like, oh, God, that's that's. That's Tom. I got to talk to him. But he was gracious and amazing as ever. And we appreciated the time we had to talk to him. Um, other people, other noteworthy uh, selections from that show. Uh, mine <laughs> definitely Richard Rogers. He oh, had, yeah, of course. So one thing I was super surprised by is the table prices on literally everyone's customers. Everything was inflated. Four digits. There was almost no one selling knives for under $1,000. And Richard Rogers was selling these ridiculously nice knives and ridiculously well-made knives for under a thousand dollars, and they truly were truly incredible. Yeah, they're so they were and so well-made, and he was really nice, and so was his I, wife. Both he and his wife, yeah. amazing people. Really would, glad we got got to know them. Um, I was Chuck just Kedratis. I was so amazed. Yeah, Chuck Adratus, also um, person I've been looking forward to meeting just because he's somewhat local to me. His he, so there's basically like four or five people whose knives really impressed me. They didn't have lock stick. The actions were nice, and Chuck was another one of those people. His nice. Um, some pe- some people who were attending the show but not showing just was really nice to get to know them. Uh, Chop knives, nice yeah. dude. Uh, really happy to to meet him. Uh, go would, give him a follow if you haven't seen. That's Chop with two P's. This never another Chop in a million years would I have expected him to be a knife maker. Well, and he I mean, is, and he does a good job with it. He does a good job. Yeah. Um, also. Uh, who else? Chuck Richards. Which he was there. Ch- which one's Chuck Richards? Too the many one that's Chuck Richards. Richards. Too the many people that is Chuck, Richards. The one that is Chuck Richards. 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 He's a good dude. Um, who else did we talk to? Oh my God, dude! We we talked to freaking uh, Medford. Yeah, Greg Medford. That was that was interesting. So it was my first time handling Medfords, and you really can't fault them. They're well made. They're nice. Like you might not I, like I, them or like him, but the knives are actually quite well made. And actually, talking to him, he was fine. Uh, really, uh, honestly, open. Didn't talk down or assume I was an idiot. You know, which is easy to do with a lot of them being around. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, <laughs> it it was a good conversation. I think we might actually have him on the show. Yeah, that was that was a mess up. Uh, you know, we do a podcast called the Knife Nuts Podcast. Oh, I've never heard of it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't expect him to. I know, but it was just like, womp, womp, Medford. Yeah. Uh, Come on. I, I don't blame him for not listening. Like, I, I wouldn't expect him to listen. No. But. no he, was, he was definitely more likable in person. Oh, very cordial. I really like that slim midi. 
Yeah. The Slim Mini Marauder. I still kind of want one, but I'm not going to pay more at the table than I am on a dealer. So That was confusing. That was weird. Yeah. Um, who else do we like? We liked a lot of people. Three Rivers Manufacturing was there. Yeah, that's another New England company in Massachusetts. They uh, they were re- they were really nice, and that I said they brought the heat. They did. They brought some heat. They have the slip joint coming. I mean, not the slip joint, the liner lock version. Their slip joint coming out. They're very the fine. Trial. They're very fine knives. Yeah, very well done. Yeah, we got we got to uh, check in with Luma, uh, Jason from Luma Blades. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, I think it was last year at the same show that we met him. Correct. That is correct. And he had a table and some very nice knives, and uh, mm-hmm. everything was looking good there. Also, so. our our usual suspects, uh, well, Matt Diskin, obviously. I got to talk to Matt Diskin. He was one of the few people I talked to, like solo. Matt Diskin's a cool guy. I, I enjoy that. We love Matt Diskin. Yeah. I love how he just came. He barely even made like he like didn't even seem to care if he sold his couple knives that he brought. They did he sell to carry weapons, but. <laughs> <laughs> his his casual attitude was really just it was pretty funny to see. Yeah, he's, uh, and then he's also, probably in my uh, he's in my favorite people type of category. I would yeah. put him. Yeah. Uh, the the other uh, usual suspects: uh, John Gray, uh, Herman Octor, Octor Knives, and mm-hmm. uh, Frank Landau. And Sebastian. Herman had his. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian, of course. Yeah. Herman had his uh, his new uh, collaboration, uh, or at least uh, an example. The knife uh, turned out very nice. One. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I will. We'll, we'll have, I have to learn more about that knife, uh, and we'll we'll full feature it at some point because it's a it's a nice uh, it's a nice product. Yeah, I mean, like the whole Southeast Pennsylvania knife making crew was represented more or less. Jeff That's was true. Jeff was there, not displaying, but it was cool. To, yes, yeah, to meet definitely a, always good to see icon. him. Yeah, he returned my um, my Escaton, which I'm happy to have back <laughs> with with an added feature. No, it's that feature has been Rect- removed. rectified. Okay, rectified thanks right. to our in-house service station. Um, did you guys talk to Resenti or see his knives? He only had a. I couple. talked to him initially. Uh, I never no. went up to his booth, and he his knives were cool. gone. He seemed a little too cool for school, so I just never went back to his table. I think he only had like five knives. They went pretty quickly, so I'm yeah, they some... were there. I could have bought one, did not. Were they not auctions or uh, bids or lot? Uh, they were first come. A lot oh of shit! First that, well, that's why they were gone so fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, I mean, who was there that was Bri- Brian Ty's was stuff sold out immediately? So never got to that's talk to always Brian the way Ty. it is. Yeah, which is really Brian funny. Ty. He's been doing this for so long, and like he's, he's so dapper. The cowboy boots. I love everything about it. Yeah, he's great. How about the? I want to be Brian Ty when I grow up. Well. Or at least, you know, his the ghost. ghost of Brian Ty. Um, how about Cultrotech, that Russian company? They were nice knives. They didn't speak a lick of English, so I couldn't get anything out of them. Yeah, those were ridiculous. I didn't even want to touch them because I had no idea what the procedure I, was to touch I them. I put my greasy fucking paws all over those production knives. Are they production? I mean, the problem. I, I just assume anything that comes out of Russia now is a production Come knife. Come on. They are ridiculous. They're very nice. I mean, yeah. I, I, production or not, they're, they're fucking beautiful. Yeah, they were they were nice um, for for sure. I think the dervish before. knives. That was the first time I was handling any of of uh, the dervish knives. Some of the designs don't really speak to me, but they're nice. Yeah. Yo, Dave, what was that fixed blade that I just needed? Oh, um, oh God, it had a what was that company's name? Oh God, it was the worst. It was attention a, to attention. detail. <laughs> yes. Attention. Oh God, bro, bro, let me tell you something. Attention to detail. What? What's your name? I can't remember your name. I don't remember his name, but uh, if, uh, could could not be nicer. I got to tell you, could not be nicer. And the fixed blades were bad ass. But the name of that company, man, what are you thinking? Yeah. Uh, t- it's a, just to be clear. It's attention number it, two detail. It's almost as bad as sharp by design. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? Is he going to say something? He fell asleep. No, I hear you, but you, you, I mean, you got to constantly try to fucking dig at me. I'm, you're not saying I'm mad at you right now because you haven't said a word. Brian wasn't there Friday, if it helps. That's true. I was there. But uh, were, were you there on Friday? Yeah, he sh- that was the only day he showed up. I can't, I, I forget that's only two days. I, is that all blurs mm-hmm. together? Yes. But uh, you you spend a lot of time at the Spartan Spartan Blades booth. Yep. Almost, um, almost bought one. 
Oh, very nice knives. I, I definitely won't. That none of us bought anything at the show. We didn't buy a thing except I for me buying a buying a Spyderco Capara off Instagram the night before. On the night you got there, yes. Yeah. I mean, there was it was realistically like everything was outside of our price range. I was supposed to get something from Liang Ma, but it didn't happen. Yeah, um, <laughs> we pussied out of talking to Herb Durr. Uh, we, we went. We, up to I his, went over it. We went up to his booth, looked at his himself. knife, told each other that it looked nice, and then walked away. Did it. We just couldn't. I don't know how long we would have kept a straight face. I, it would have been too difficult. I wanted to give Herb Durr a hug, man. He looks Herb Durr. Herb Durr. He's good. I like Herb Durr. There were some companies where the figureheads were missing. So, like, Rick was not there with Hinderer, and he Mick was not there with uh, Mick Strider Knives. Yes. So, I feel like, I don't know. Both of those companies were represented, but I don't think they had anything. Well represented. Re- well represented. I mean, you went over there and. You had a, you got to see things. Uh, it was good to handle some of the the triway pivot system knives. It oh, yeah, really full, does make a fucking well difference. Holy well, shit! The, the only problem uh, is you can't erase the internet, so there are just so many years of people talking about how bad hinderers flip that, like, they'll. I, I think I don't know. It's going to take a I long time for the narrative I to think, shift. I don't think they have any problems selling them, so it doesn't matter. Also a good point. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really it really doesn't matter. They do sell super well. I mean, they're just getting bigger and bigger and or so. Right. That that's not really. A Did I buy thing. anything at that show? I don't think I bought. A no, I, I don't think any. I, I don't think any of us bought anything. I mean, like the so the in demand makers, like Peter Resenti, the stuff was gone super fast. Um, mm-hmm. And then the less in demand makers were charging way more than I expected. Um, oh my god! Let's talk about, about let's talk about the Europeans, right? Yeah, like. What guys? It's two thousand dollars for mediocre knives. I mediocre. Didn't. Okay, if you want to jump out there, I'll. I'll, I'll just. Say I, didn't, I don't want to be the person that. Uh, okay, here's the thing. Here's first. the thing. I'll say it. The price of the knives makes the knives seem mediocre by comparison to everything else. Let's yeah. take one of Jens's knives, and nothing, nothing against these guys because they're nice people. They've done a lot for the. For the community and a lot for for knives. I can't take it away from them. But the prices they're charging for their custom pieces. Let's take one of Jens's knives and put it next to one of uh, Chuck Richards. Not Chuck Richards. Let's take it. We could do it for his too, but I meant to say Richard Rogers. Yeah, it was about half the price for Richard Rogers. Half the price. And I mean, which one was a finer product in your mind? In your mind? Yeah, I mean, I thought the comparison. I thought uh, Anzo's stuff was actually was was quite nice, but I thought the Vox true Vox was, Vox stuff. was okay. more surprising to me. That's a better comparison, I should say. Anzo's stuff wasn't bad, but it honestly it didn't feel much different than your giant mouse, dude. Which is to say, not that good. I don't want to leave you out here alone on this one, but <laughs> this, uh, I'm just saying controversial. That's okay. It's it is what it is. If you like the knife, buy it. I'm just not going to spend sixteen hundred dollars on it. He has plenty of people lined up to do so, so it doesn't matter what I say. That is true. They are the table prices are definitely higher than you would think for two pieces of titanium. And uh, in my mind, on on, on on my here. show with with my opinion, I would n- not spend that money. I just wouldn't. But I mean, I can see I can see the appeal. People like those designs. Collect that. That designer. That, yeah, I mean, there's maker. just there's a lot of sort of brand history and appeal with both of them. So I, I they'll never run out of people that are interested. So okay. you're right. Can we talk matter. about those those box flippers though? Which yes, yes. Okay. Can I say they're not worth two thousand uh, dollars? People were mad about the the Shirogorov. Yeah, right. That was that, that doesn't make it that blows my mind with the well the, the problem the the vox stuff to me is like some had lock bar inserts some didn't um but they were mostly flat titanium scales was with like, like a VG flat round with vg10 damascus well no that was on i think anzo's used that in the past the takafu vg10 oh, damascus right. but no anzo stuff was i mean uh vox's stuff was all mono steel but i mean if you want to spend 1400 dollars on that then that's cool um, and no amount of production knives will change your mind about that, but there are some pretty good production knives out there for about two to $300 that do a lot of the same things possibly better. 
I don't know. I, I don't I know how to say it in a diplomatic I way. I have one of those artisan traditions coming with that VG10 Damascus in it. Yeah, I mean... But, I, I mean, it's not really an argument. It's No, I mean, custom knives are always going to be more expensive, but, like, it's just a surprise how expensive they've got. My point is that in that custom, in that custom knife world, I'm not even comparing them to production knives, okay? Because that's not fair. No, it really is. It's just isn't. not, you know? I'm comparing them to other production knives, one table, other custom knives, one table over. You yeah, know? it's it's a stark contrast. That's where it becomes really weird. And I can imagine someone coming into this hobby who's ready to spend money and is ready to understand and, and is looking at all this stuff and is just really confused as to what makes a good knife a good knife because price is never the thing that decides. Price, price was good. price is not reflective of that. That is the truth. Mm-hmm. I'll I will jump in and help you. And agree that two the the two slabs of titanium with uh, little to no decoration or per, you know personal flair or really just nothing added to that well. basic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just adding um, that in and a, yeah. and, and a spring clip. <laughs> just thought I should throw it out there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> so the the historical piece, uh, you know, and and buying from the guys who came up with some of the, the shapes and features that are iconic. Um, that have become standard and iconic it is a big deal and i agree um but i'm also with Lavon a little bit on this one with some that just uh <clears throat> phoned it in maybe a little bit uh, but did not adjust i agree that's what it is i feel like sometimes they're, they're sense phoning sense? it in like i'm gonna sell these for two thousand dollars no matter what i don't really care if some have inserted yeah whether they have whether they have timascus or uh yeah G-10. i know it's still going to be 2000. That's bucks. why there are the makers that we tend to associate with and the ones that we tend to plug, they have a lot of pride in what they do. And I'm not saying that those guys don't, but we'll use Brian as example because we can like any knife he puts on his table, he's going to make sure that thing is fucking perfect. He freaks out. Like even if we're handling them, he's, he's still eagle eyeing us, making sure we're not going to do anything to it or put fingerprints on it. Even there's a lot of attention and a lot of stress that goes into when he prepares for a show. I'm sure that they're stressed out too. I'm sure but the pressure is not on them. I don't think they're they're with the giant mouse stuff with CRKT with all the things that they I, have yeah, going on. I think financially they're quite stable. They're 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 on easy street. And it used to be what's funny to me is like I'm using the, the those the Danes as a as an example uh, because they're easy to pick on and they probably don't listen to this podcast because english isn't their first language so (laughs) it's i forgot what i was going to say it's it's weird because they you're making fun of the language disabled because i think did you assume i think we can assume the danish the danish knife makers first like danish i think it's that's probably not an assumption i think that's just a fact the the, what i was going to say is that their knives used to be very reasonably priced at the show their table prices recently shot up. Dude, like hype, you could get hype is hype is a hell of a drug, man. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, mean, when you start the, pro- I think one of the bad things that a maker can do is start to price their stuff to what the secondary market makes of them. Yeah, because that's how you bury yourself. I, I understand it because people don't want to miss yeah, out on it, that money. I, I get, I get why you don't like it. I get why. Everyone would dislike. I understand. That. I understand, but f- it is an inevitability of. It is an inevitability in a in a sort of a capitalist yeah. well, system. I don't. That, what I think is that it's the lowest common denominator will always be maximize profits. I agree with cost. you, but at the same time, you want to have that longevity. It's no good to maximize profits if you're not able to sell that knife a year from now. I think that those Danish people are on on the right track because they're somehow able to beat that system and people are still paying twenty four ninety five for one of their flippers. Yeah. I mean at the table. Good good for them. I think I'll just continue to support them by buying, you know, production knives that they've designed. I, th- I think the the custom knives I had I, like and prop, value listen, proposition I, for me. Last year at the same show I left with one of the the Vox. That is knives, true. You know? It was a mm-hmm. thousand bucks. Or I think it was nine hundred dollars table price. Wow, that did go up a lot. Uh, well, there's some real evidence then, yeah, because that's that was not what they were. I mean, I, I spent my money on it. That's yeah. what it is. So, you know, 
it's whatever. They're they're nice guys. They make they design beautiful knives. They even make some good knives. Like I, I'll say that, but I I think it's easy to use them as an example for uh, the pit, the, pit, the pitfalls the of the of here, this here. Uh, this climate. And I, I'm I'm not being naive in thinking that the, the Chinese knife market hasn't really affected that either. But that's right. a whole other. Well, thing. everyone, direct your complaints uh, right to Levon, not to me. You can you can write to me. I don't care. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Chinese knife market, the only Chinese company there was Reich. And mm. uh, the same machi- shit that they had last year. Yeah, the machining is insane, but like, I mean, it was just a handful of their production knives at the exact price you'd pay anywhere else. So They're it's just there like, to try and sell to, as an OE. That's yeah. all they wanted to do. Yeah, it was I'm definitely like a covert. Them. Let's let's recruit people that we can do OEM work mm-hmm. for. Yeah, that, they had a couple cool. of those those weird named OTFs in there, which uh, were amazing. Yeah, that are probably going to come out under someone else's. Mm. Wait, no, because yeah. you can't import OTFs to the U.S. They're automatic. It's illegal. Which is strange, right? Yeah. So that was an interesting thing. I, um, talking about what the consequences the consequences could be of. They're nice guys. I will put that out there. Yeah, they were nice. Um, the consequences of repealing the federal switch ban blade. Switch blade. Who are we ban. talking to about that in depth? Switch ban. That was blade. a mouthful. Jeremiah. Oh, I. God damn it! I'm just gonna have to edit this whole part out now. But anyway, so yeah, if you repeal that, then Chinese companies can start selling autos and butterfly knives in the U.S. You can, yo, uh, you can definitely edit this because I, I believe he did not want to be. Named. Let's take that right out. Okay. I'll, Remember that part. Yeah. I, I mean, we you well, can still mention it. I was talking to say the idea didn't come just, what I was. Topics. What I was actually talking about was a conversation. I think I had the previous night with Matt Diskin around spider co specifically. So I think that's what I was what, what about to, now I, uh, using because we were yeah. talking about ballast songs. Yeah. 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 Cause they got Which fined I, many years ago, right. like a huge fine. Um, RJ Martin's knives. God damn. Those detents are strong. Like, Way, Whoa! Way too strong for me. Yep. Whoa! Too they strong. Are, did you handle for them, Dave? The detent dickle. dickle. Is it really? That's my name now. Detent dickle. Dave the detent oh, dickle. Thank you. Um, yeah. it's flattering. Um, man, those yeah, those detents are wild. I, too uh, much for he, me. I like. He's trying to trying to get really fancy with his machining now. Did you see some of them had like a lot of uh, uh, flair and? some wacky designs on them that he hasn't done before. I very briefly handled one Q36, barely could flip it and then just put it down. And I was like, nope. So from, so the rumor has it that he was offered to do a, a collaboration with Shirogorov. Oh shit. A Q36 from Shirogorov would be nuts. And, and he declined because he said he could do it better. Oh shit. That's, mm. I didn't that see. is the rumor. I don't know. I didn't see that. I mean, is that, does that come from the Armenian connection? It does not. Okay. Interesting. It does not. Very interesting. But yeah, those were um, some strong ass detents. I didn't get to touch any of Kirby Lambert's stuff. I think he had like three knives and they were gone. I, I, I talked to him as he was eating a a pretzel factory pretzel for the I first time. I remember that. You did recommend that he eat, eat it with mustard. He wasn't going <laughs> to put mustard on the damn pretzel factory I know. pretzel. It's an insult to all Philadelphians. I mean, he was appreciative after he put the mustard on. I mean, it's... It's solid. I put did, a little mustard on it. I did like how Burnley held court and, and also Horton. They just had tons of dudes surrounding them. Horton's a nice dude. Yeah. I, I talked to him. Briefly. But they, they weren't even, they weren't displaying or anything. They were just there and they had a they lot. Were just there. there was a lot of people that just wanted to talk to them. Oy. <laughs> Barry was definitely in that mix. Of course. But um, I don't know. That's kind of it for the show. The, uh, Demko had a lot of knives actually. Yeah. And they were cool. It was cool to handle the scorpion lock. I think some of them, they still had a few left when I left on Saturday. So I had one of the original prototypes of, of that knife. Wow. I barely even remember that that happened. Mm-hmm. I had number thir- 15 or something. They're starting a podcast, which is interesting uh, because he did not seem known? like a very gregarious individual. Well, it has a name to to reflect the lack of gregariousness. Yeah. Shout out to the knife dialogue. The but. knife dialogue. Hey, not that knife nuts is a uh, yeah. Not that we know, really nailed it. With we're our not. Name. We're not really breaking any new ground here with our with our naming. But I yeah, feel we, like it. it we really fits. Nailed, nailed it. Can we talk about this trend that I identified? 
that stuck with me the whole time is that how many knives to make the action super light. This was customs to make it like super free falling, free dropping that everybody just had super light lock bar, deten- uh, yeah. lock bar tension. And it felt like every knife was <laughs> lock bar detention. <laughs> You're going to lock bar <laughs> detention. Lock bar de- Lock bar detention. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm putting That's all those knives in lock say. bar detention. Lock bar detention. They all just felt like they had super loose actions, like the pivot was just loose, but it was just because they wildly light, wildly light. I don't know if that works, but super Brian, light. Lock Brian bar. goes to lock bar detention because of his. I his, think he's been in lock bar detention. Yes. Where has he been? He's sitting there. He's He's got a dunce cap on. It's lock bar detention. Well, <laughs> now we have the cover for this episode. Great. Mm. Yeah, and that, that was the one thing I noticed as a trend. And I, I hate it because I know everyone wants the free dropping action, but it just makes them feel cheap. It makes knives feel cheap when you do that to achieve that. Uh, lock, light lock bar tension? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It, On a frame lock? You went to, uh, did your Goros feel cheap yes. when they. Uh, yes. I, don't, I feel them? like they don't. Oh, I don't think they I handled I my like first Shiro Goro and I was not impressed. Oh. The, I hot, like that, the Hati, I, I don't know. The Hati if it has very light lock. Everybody talked about how crazy the free dropping. It's not like rocket science. Yeah, I I, I, that. Oh, I, that's not why I like the Hati. Oh no, I like it because it's I mean, it's, it's a great design and it's the, an awesome design. It's an absolutely awesome design, but in terms of like the smoothness, it's not like a mystery it's how not, they achieved it. That, yeah, it's not exactly. Yes, I agree. Um, side note: that's like creeping up into like my top five knives. I mean. It is dark, dark, dark cherry. cherry yeah, it, it is really the dark cherry. The Alutex or whatever is really cool. Yeah, I, I really like it. So, what is that noise? What is it's, it's Jake, obviously. Jake, no, Jake. no amount of sound editing can. <laughs> here's what I'm, I need. I have to make a request, Jake. The only you, someone has to go tie your hands to the fucking chair for the next episode. <laughs> that's that's all. You can't. You're not allowed to do anything but record the podcast. This is getting very kinky. I don't know how I feel about this. And then have Katie come and cut you free <laughs> at the end. So I think that's about it for Friday. Um, so after that, we struggled to figure out dinner for a couple hours. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, we went on a – okay. Well, let's – let's. the elephant in the room is Jake didn't want to leave the hotel room. <laughs> He's paralyzed in the bed. Par- par- after Jake paralyzed himself in the hotel room, did not – I told and and told you guys to just go without me. Go. Well, that have is fun. the fucking stu I'm on vacation. My feet are up. My clothes are off. Leave me alone. Um, but the <laughs> you point got to is, you're eating food in bed, man. So should have have a good time. So we went out to dinner with a uh, Mike. That's not gone well. Who's been a supporter of the podcast for a while? So that was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took us forever to find a restaurant. <laughs> We also went out with, I mean, Aaron, Brian, yeah. and, and and what's his Bill, name? Meat Pants. Archibald Meat Pants himself. Yeah, was, that was great. I know his real name. His fake name escapes me. Archibald Meat Pants was awesome to meet in person. I was I was very happy. I it does not disappoint. That's no, amazing. it really doesn't. That's a wild He's, crew. Yeah, so Brian showed up. Yeah, That's Brian. Like, then, then Brian was Brian, coming. A wild Nadeau appears. Yeah, that was great. Just came out of nowhere. Luckily, he, it, uh, he was able to show us... Uh, the Evo Typhoon at, at the hotel. And I got so. to handle an arch nemesis. So I can I can die happy knowing that. Be a happy person. And and yes, there is photographic evidence of all of us together. Yes. It's actually kind of a sweet photo. Yeah. I think that should be the cover for the next podcast. But I'll, I'll swap all of our faces. <laughs> I like that idea. Can you, can you take away my belly and tits for me, <laughs> no, please? No, I'm going to give you a bigger belly and a bigger tits. <laughs> Just I don't know if that's possible. Throw some shadows in there. <laughs> Increase the shadows. If if he takes away your belly, he's gonna swap his hair. I'm gonna swap my hair under your head. (laughs) I'm gonna swap our tits. I'm gonna put your tits on Dave. That's a look. Yeah. And then uh, Aaron singing Baby Shark. It came out much better than the picture we took with uh, our fan Ben, where like three of us are not looking in the right direction. Well, I have a couple of them where you're staring off into space. Yeah, that sounds about right. It was overwhelming. It, it was overwhelming. It, it, it was too much. It was too much knives for me. You, like you would not survive blade show. No, I absolutely wouldn't. Like that. That but was you're coming next year. Like I like this hobby as much as anyone else. I mean, I'm on a goddamn podcast about it. Um, it's it's my primary hobby. But even I have limits. Where like I need to do something that isn't knives. And even one day of of <laughs> the New York show was all right. This is a lot. This is too much. 
I'm surprised that we all get along really well in person too. I mean, we all know each other in person. It's not like we met on the internet. Well, we I did know, meet on the internet, but we, we 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 lived in a hotel room for <laughs> with Aaron too. It actually went. Yeah, we, I oh, thought it was going to go much worse, and he only like sort of molested me once. Can we? Oh yeah, there was a lot of molestation, mostly aimed at Jake. Uh, aimed at Jake, yes. There's photographic evidence of that, which I may or may not share at a later <laughs> date. Um. Also, he brought his father-in-law's. Knife. Yes, the John W. Smith stuff was was super oh, great. Oh my! God. And he he sold one. Of them. I mean, Aaron's not Aaron's knives were good too, but but I fell oh, in love shit. with that one. Those were great. Oh, yeah, those me too. Great. One was real nice. Oh wait, is yeah, that Brian? You liked it, Brian? You liked a knife? It was so good. Even Brian liked it. That's hell me. What are you well, I mean, about? Three about? There's a lot of knives I like. What knives do you like? Yes, I would like like a whole Tell list us. of them. Perhaps we're listening. I'm not listening. one of you queer modes that know every goddamn name and everything of all this shit. I know my stuff. <laughs> so you like the typhoon, the mini typhoon. I the like chicane. typhoon, the chicane. Hold on, there's a lot of chicanery <laughs> going on, man. <laughs> We're gonna re- um, chicanery. We got to spend a lot of time with Tim. Yeah. Reed. So that night after that same night after we went to yep. dinner and Jake ignored us and left us and didn't want to hang out with his friends. We hung out with our new friends. We made new we friends. So friends, and they had- after I had dinner and then had a second dinner. <laughs> that was- I had a second dinner. <laughs> then it was straight to the to the Tim Reeves suite. Ah. It was very yes. moody in there. We record so Dave and I recorded an episode of the Think Twice Cut of the Think Twice Cut Once Cut podcast. Guest. Yes, it was awesome. Yes. It went for like apparently like three hours. Is that it's how long? No it different went? recording a podcast in person, like. You know, it's it's also better that we didn't have to really think about the podcast because it wasn't ours. We were the guests. Yeah, but no, it just flowed. I imagine how much better our podcast could be if we were doing it in person. Like now that I've had a taste of it, like, damn, like it was just so much easier and it just it just worked better. But that was really it fun. really did. I mean, yeah, I really time. liked. The, I I thought I would like the Chris Reeve Knives crew. I do like them. It was awesome. Your boner it was, it was, it was yeah, hell yeah. You know what? Fuck it. I'll fanboy for them. It was awesome. I got to find out a bunch of stuff about that company. It was such a good time. I was very happy about that part. I, you know what? I will say this. I all kidding aside. I was excited for Dude, it. It was, I mean, and not to mention they're awesome. dudes. They are. It was really fun. Um, I'm looking forward to when that, that comes whole, out. Everybody in the family to, to everyone at Chris Reed. Yeah. Dude, nice. I mean, was, Anne was super nice. You guys Matt was was great, dude. You could not have been more accommodating. Yeah, too, absolutely. So seriously, Anne offered to get me lunch the next day on Saturday. I was like, "Wow, it was it was cool." Um, I'm really excited for that to come out. So everyone, definitely go check out their podcast. We'll be on in forthcoming episode. It's like three hours of content. Mm-hmm. It's basic. There's a lot of knife nut stuff in it's, there. It's yeah, it's a lot. So it's 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 chock full it's, of stuff. I, it, and and really cool Chris Reeve lore. So because I bet on other episodes, I honest to God, I haven't listened to the podcast, but I know for a fact he doesn't talk a lot about knives. So there's a if you're a Chris Reeve fan, I think our episode of his podcast. Yeah, I got to ask like, like Chris every Reeve single focused. question I've had about the company. So. We had a really good time. Yeah, it was, that was that was awesome. That was a real highlight. And then Saturday, Saturday was. I mean, some people had new knives out. Low but key. Yeah, it's pretty low key. I mean, we got to sort of meet with the Blade Runner Systems guys, which was really cool. Yeah, it was good to talk to them. Uh, news on that at yeah. some point. But it, it was not, it, they were nice to meet. And then uh, you know, I was I was just so done with knives. I ended up leaving at four approximately. Did anything happen after I left? Uh, Tom Crine. Uh, took us on a tour of his world. <laughs> that sounds very, very cool. It was, it was, I mean, he's, he's immense. Yeah. No, Tom Crine's great. Um, I love, I love how he just had, uh, on Saturday, he just had, um, business cards for Ma- Mark of the maker. It didn't have anything set up otherwise. Well, we miss those guys there too. Uh, I, w- I, after blade show, I'm, do we just need to do something with them at some point? I think that would be a really funny, contrast to have us and them on the same yeah, show absolutely we have to devise some sort of game <laughs> that would be interesting i don't know what will you guys think on that i think mark already d- devised the game it's <laughs> oh, a fight yeah. to the death it's mortal mark. kombat come on can, oh man can, the mortal kombat theme can be put right in there it'd be yeah great. no that's a surefire cnd um 
But mm. yeah, I don't know. It was overall, it was it was cool. I, I did, yeah, I did enjoy meeting the people. It was definitely better than the knives. I maybe I would like it better if I had more money to spend. There's something about seeing all the knives and not being able to buy any of them that's a little defeating. But overall, it was. I'm I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. True. Uh, to, to me, it's always like I I want to be able to buy them. Like it, it's like it's like a strip club to me. <laughs> it's like all right, you can just look. It's not that fun. Okay, so if you had all the money in the world, what knife would you buy? What would I have bought there at that uh, show? What would you have bought if you had all the money? And well, okay, let's let's say you had, let's say you had two thousand dollars. What would you have bought to spend on one knife or? Um, I know what you would have bought. I don't, the limited edition. Uh, no, I would not have. I would not Damascus have that for $2,000. I, li- I like CRK. I'm not buying that for $2,000. Um, maybe a Spenzo, but probably one of Richard Rogers' knives. Like, I would have really liked to have gotten one of those. Okay. That's a good. That's Okay. So you have. So now you have $1,500 left because Richard Rogers prices his knives. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I don't, that's a great question. After that. Huh. Yeah. Maybe you had a point, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, good point. <laughs> this, this, what was I don't know. About? I mean, I could I could spend that money. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I like the culture. But is it stuff that I would I would just leave there, just screaming from the rooftops? I have this now. It just there was a lot happened. of cool production knives coming out, so that was also a big a big part of it. There's a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of. There's a lot of custom knives that I want that weren't there yeah. or weren't attainable. Very true. So. Yes, Jake. Can I play that game? Oh, go I for it. Have definitely, definitely, Sal. definitely bought that. That. Oh, yeah. Well, that too. Uh, no, I oh, would have yeah. bought one of the uh, JW Smith. Uh, I don't. Which was the one that I liked the best? There was a. There was Zerk. a really fancy Westinghouse oh, no, it wasn't one Zerk. that was not. No. Was it the no, Zerk I like the, the Damascus one. The one with the micarta. The the regular micarta. Yeah. Which are whatever. That I would have, yeah. and that. That was under. I think each of, if each of us had the money, we should have all left with one of those. That would have been cool. Uh, I just I don't get that, uh, you know, enamored with knives too often these days. But that you one do. really did it. That one really did. But it yes, me. those were those were exceptional. I, I would agree with you, Jake. I think if I had the money, that's or even the desire. Even if I had the money at the time, the desire was not there to buy it. The uh, but that would have been it. Yeah, to some extent, I, I there wasn't that many. And now that I think about it, there really weren't that many knives that I wanted. There's stuff. There was just stuff that wasn't there that I did want, and I was like, I could spend a bunch of money here, or I could wait till there's something I really want that's coming out soon. So mm-hmm. I don't know. But that's p- a part of like you know the demographic there is expensive custom knives. So not really my scene, but it was still cool and sell stuff. I would definitely would have left with one of Sal's yeah. knives. I imagine those got brought in pretty good money. <laughs> and if I had infant funds, do you know how many art knives I would have left with? What oh, from the so Maria Stelina table? Oh my! Oh, sh- how cool were they? Um, I mostly uh, there were so many people crowded around the table. I didn't even sort of interact. Oh, with maybe them. you weren't. Maybe you weren't there. Were you there when we were? Um, yeah, when everyone was like playing with the knives, but there was like a million people around the table, so I just kind of wandered off. Oh, and I was, was I was talking about this at that time, but. Oh, that's right. You were wild, disconnect. wild knives. That was cool to see those. I think that was one of my favorite parts of yeah. the show. Do you know what table probably had the most interest? Was the Starling Gear table. I did not go over there once. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of people. Or was it a Steel Flame? I can't remember. <laughs> I had a, a long, covert talk with someone. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. It was covert. It was well, covert. Jake, you know who I had a conversation with. Tell me after. He looks like sure. A- I was going to say over in that corner was where Tom Krein took us uh, to uh, get some super high end oh, hardware. That, not, not and exciting. I still have to deliver that hardware. With the Stephen to, Kelly to Ryan table. Yes, the that's tie, Kelly tie, tie, tie conductor tie connector connector. Tie connector. connector. Devil connector. Sorry. God. It's, uh, yeah. But uh, but I have to get that to Brian somehow. So if anyone's going I mean, to visit Brian, screws, you, know, you could put them in an envelope and put a stamp on it. You could do it. that. It's an option. Yeah, I'd rather. 
I'd they're not going to do that until I drive there. <laughs> All right. Let me know when we're going. It's back so on, bad on, that, mute. like, I never even got my <laughs> coffee mug. So it's got so bad that Adam actually <laughs> bought me one. And he shipped it to me. That's a friend. Oh, my God. You guys are fucking co-workers. Adam, Wait, how have you not gotten the mug yet? Jake, how did you not give it to him at the show? <laughs> oh, no. I Don't look at me. I, I don't have this Jake. mug. Yes, Where's yours, the do, the mug? I gave you yours. Why would I have his? Brian's mug? Because Whoever I, has it, I hope you drink something out of it and get the I, shits. <laughs> well, I mean, I drink coffee out of mine, so it's butterfish. Oh, well, I have Brian's Christmas present all wrapped up, and uh, guess what's not in it now? A mug. <laughs> Never was. It didn't exist. Yeah, this was all a lie. So, I think I mean, Brian is crossed off Dave my house Christmas. Pretty good. I enjoy it. It's a good mug. Solid, solid mug. Good. I have a lot of mugs. I don't really use yeah. them. There. Yeah. So here's the thing, guys. I don't know if you want to leave this in the show, but remember I sent you that yes. thing with Deneen Pottery? That's the same dude. Yes. So are we going to have mugs? We should have fucking mugs. All right. Am I wrong? Yeah. If, if people Jake, buy them. Jake, seriously. <laughs> Oh, without a doubt, my favorite part of the show was finding out that Chris Reeve in di- did indeed put hands on Jay Davis at Blade Show in like 2012 or something. That's that story and is true. He has, he returned, has returned. So too, yeah, right? Wingding of the Week is has also returned because Jay Davis is back, and y'all are getting uh-huh. duped. I don't care if he said that he's paid everyone back. This may have just caused so many fucking problems. Like. Uh, yeah, good luck to everyone who's going to support him on whatever his next endeavor is, but you're getting duped. Chris Reed's going to have to choke him out again. It's going to be great. That would be a sight to see. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have... That was a lot of it stuff. It is, and we still have more with. stuff to do next episode with CRKT's catalog, which should provide us with some good comic material or perhaps some praise. I have not actually looked at these knives very well, so... Maybe they're not as bad. We should get it. We should be inundated with catalogs. Yeah, soon. but not from Spider Co. <laughs> Bringing it back no. around. Well, Shot hmm. Show is only a month away, so we have. I have a lot of new knives coming in from different companies that I, I just really wanted to try. All right. So we'll have some interesting. Yeah, stuff we'll do an end of the year out. episode. Get a roundup and talk about our best of. Oh, I can't wait to start thinking of our best of categories. Yes. Dave, we got to have fun with this. All right. One. Wow. So are, is that a wrap? Are we wrapping? <laughs> Do we have any Apparently, other things yes. we need to address here, like the giveaway, or are we doing that later? Oh, we should do a giveaway. What giveaway should we I do? I thought the, the the progeny. The progeny? Let's address that later, because I'm not prepared. Okay. <laughs> to be determined, then. We'll do that. We'll give that away in the next All episode. right. So, yes. Give that, because, yeah, I want enough people to get in on That's it. That's a good too. point. So we are giving away that progeny again. So uh, not again, it's the first time, but again, we are talking about giving away this progeny. Um, just just give us 25 bucks on the Patreon. You'll be entered to win it. <laughs> that's that's, our, that's that, a good that's job it. plugging it, man. Sorry, it's late. It's yeah, 10 o'clock, Yeah, we got to wrap man. this shit up. All right. Yeah, I'm with Brian. Let's, let's end it let's all end now. It. All right. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank you. See you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And do the noise. Do the thing, Jake, so I can end it. To everyone. No, stop it. That's not it. Do the do the do the the do the the, 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 to our Patreon supporters especially. We love you guys. (laughs) Patreon. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark and daddy shark do 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 daddy shark do 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 daddy shark do 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 daddy shark and mama shark do 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 mama shark do 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 mama shark do 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 mama shark Grandpa shark do 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 do. Grandpa shark do 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 do. Grandpa shark do 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 do. Grandpa shark. Grandma shark do 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 do. Grandpa shark do 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 do. Grandma shark do 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 do. Grandma shark. Run away do 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 do. Run away do 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 do. Run away do 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 do. Run away. Safe at last, do 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 do. Safe at last, do 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 do. Safe at last, do 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 do. Safe at last, baby shark.